is the Glass Cannon Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Friends of the Pod, uh, the show where we play the games that our friends are making or have made. Uh, In this case, a game that is in the making. I'm very excited to be back with an all new game for Friends of the Pod tonight. And I'm thrilled to be sitting with this incredible, incredible cast. You know, we say that a lot for a lot of our shows, but this time it's it's not bullshit (laughs) like it normally is. Okay, I see how it is. I see how it is. (laughs) I mean, this time. (laughs) Look at this absolutely spectacular uh, collection of role-playing masters. Uh, We've got Paula Deming, Josephine McAdam, Sydney Emanuel, and the one and only Skidmar uh, here tonight. Uh, We'll we'll, we'll chat with everybody in a second, but I just want to thank our friends at Cephalo Fair who are in the midst of creating, porting over, probably the greatest board game ever created, Gloomhaven, and making it into Gloomhaven, the role-playing game. And I'm so excited to get this opportunity to, to dig into these rules at a, at a beta test stage and, and try to play remotely with my good friends and, and check this thing out and see, see how it plays as a, as a non-board game. I want to go to Paula first. Paula, first of all, uh, where the hell are you? This is not I'm where in, I'm used to seeing you. I'm much closer via to Via satellite. Y- yeah, much closer to y'all right now than normal. And by y'all, I mean the three <laughs> New Yorkers actually, or y'all are, are y'all and you're not in New York. Anyway, close enough. I'm in Connecticut right now visiting family. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. So I'm on East Coast time and I don't know if you can hear it, but in somewhere nearby me is a rooster. And not only did I wake <laughs> up this morning because of the rooster, it is crowing. Oh, wait, now that's just a siren, but it is crowing in the background, so you might be able to hear. <laughs> Come right, to a it's either rooster. an ambulance right. start, or a rooster. And I'm going to start narrowing this down. You're in a location with both <laughs> sirens and <laughs> roosters. Uh, Stanford? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that guy who can like geo track anybody on Twitter is now zooming in on Google it's Earth on like where exactly you Confined. are. Uh, uh, Paula, Fine, you yeah. are our resident board game master. Uh, Joe is all, Josephine is also a, a right. uh, lifelong board game player as I am. Uh, but Paula, you have you had any experience with board games that are porting themselves over to role playing games? Is this something you've done before, or is this one of the first? opportunities you're having to do something like this um i am trying to think uh i don't know if i've done anything that was a board game and is now an rpg but i've played a lot of rpgs that are made with a board game audience in mind so it's like Mm -hmm. this is kind of a half card game half rpg is a way to like ease the transition Mm -hmm. um so there is a black cat outside. I just had a Halloween blessing. Okay. Um, <laughs> just went right There's so much going I'm, on. This is, <sighs> wow. I can't even focus on, on what we're doing right now. There's we roosters, here, there's Paul. sirens, yeah. there's We black need you cats. here. We're doing a show right um, now. Oh my gosh. Right now? <laughs> Wait, this is, oh, hi everyone. Hi Twitch chat. Uh, um, no, I, I do yeah, appreciate so. the, the insight and what you said triggered a, a thought in my head that I had while preparing for this. I was like, you know, to, to explain it to people that don't have any experience with Gloomhaven at all, have never played the board game or anything, you may be thinking of, you know, primarily a board with small pieces and the tactics associated with it. And while Gloomhaven does have that, what I think more explains the spirit of this role playing game is it's kind of like if you took a collectible card game and turned it into a a a campaign style RPG where you're actually have your cards that have abilities that you do, you physically play when you're in encounters, but also those same cards act as your stamina, right? Like your ability Mm -hmm. to do things over a day. And so you will discard cards without using the set ability on them just to represent energy loss throughout a day. And so where traditional RPGs will have a short rest or a a long rest at the end of a day, get your spells back, that kind of thing. 
with the Gloomhaven RPG, it's get your deck back, get your hand yeah, back. It's kind of like build each your one hand. of your cards is a spell slot that you have to use in a sense, right? Like it's like yeah, an action a way. slot or a spell slot. And every time you use one of your cards to do something, you've kind of used that slot, right? And you get totally, a little yeah. and you get a little sleepy. <laughs> and you yeah. get a little yeah. sleepy. sleepy. I mean, that, uh, that checks out. I get a little sleepy with every single thing I do. I do. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, <laughs> yes. Very we, elegant in that we way. We talked about that too, which I think is such a cool like mechanic in that not even when you're in combat and using like your spell slots, if you're just making checks, you know, like you're investigating something or talking to someone, you know, you if you fail, you have to then take an unknown card out of your deck because it's like, yeah, you just worked on that for like two hours and you didn't get anything yeah. done, you know, and then you look at this mess you've made. This is me. This is just a story about me. You look at this mess you made <laughs> after working it. and you're like, it's worse than before. I need to just leave it alone and stop doing this. And then you walk away. <laughs> yeah. Take a nap. Take a nap. Yeah, take a nap because, <laughs> boy, that made me sleepy. <laughs> you heard it here first, everybody. Uh, the, the philosophy of Sidney Emanuel, just stop trying. Stop it and take a nap. Stop trying. Like, like a toddler having a tantrum. And, and, and take yeah. a nap. And take a nap. Uh, Sid, thank you for joining us. You have not played the Gloomhaven board game. Is no. that correct? Yeah, yeah. I believe that I've, was, yeah. I've always wanted to. I, I do love board games. It's just finding the group to play with these bigger board games like Gloomhaven. You have to be committed. And many of my friends have the attention spans of goldfish. So it's hard to, <laughs> it's like wrangling cats. It's hard to get them together, let alone read a bunch of rules. But I'm, I feel very lucky I get to do this RPG with you guys, especially Josephine and Paula, because one, I never get to hang out with you guys. Uh, but hey. two, uh, I appreciate all this knowledge because hopefully it will allow me to play Gloomhaven, the actual board game. And sorry, I, I just, I, I have to do this because it's like <laughs> the idea of having your friends over uh, and being like, hey, I, I want to play this game real quick. <laughs> and then sh walking this <laughs> in the room. It's like, I can't even like hold it for too long. It's so <laughs> massive. You need your friends to like help you lift the box. Uh, yeah. That's why you're yeah. over it. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you get like Reddit threads of people being like, am I the asshole? I went over to right. a friend's house and they wanted me to play a game, but it took like two hours to explain the rule and I didn't want to play anymore. Am I the asshole? Am I the asshole? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to drink asshole. beers with my friends. Am I the jerk? I, I don't. <laughs> Josephine, thank you so much for playing with us. It is wonderful to get a chance to play with you uh, again. And I am uh, I'm thrilled to have a co uh, gloom master on this because Josephine <laughs> is the other person on this call who has actually GM'd uh, uh, Gloomhaven uh, RPG. Yeah. So yeah. thanks for the help. But don't set the expectation too high. <laughs> <laughs> so much gloom time master, has passed. A master yes. of gloom. I I am a master of gloom. I mean, in game, out of game, all around. <laughs> uh, yeah, I likewise have not played the board game though. Mm. Never played, and so it's exciting. And it was really exciting going into it, being a gloom master, having not played the board game at all, having no preconceived notion of like, well, this is how the, it usually plays right yeah or this how is it how the should work plays. right yeah so it was really interesting i think we had a lot of fun with it though i'm yeah i'm interested to see what this other joe gloom master actually you're you must be named joe to gloom master yeah that was actually <laughs> that's one of the rules Rex. i mean Part they're working the it out in the beta yeah. i don't know if it's going to be that way in the final <laughs> version that you must be named joe to run i think a they should Haven. change that yeah, it's, it's, you have to it's, legally change your name actually to Joe to be yeah. A, they give yeah, you want it to be accepted by a wider audience, you know, more yeah. general RPG yeah. audience. Yeah, it's just weird that they in the box set they give you the paperwork to legally change yeah. your name. It's just yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> it's, it's a good name, you know. It's like very gender neutral. Like it's, it's you know, it, that's it appeals as, to everyone. As demonstrated here, strong name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just picturing physical character sheets coming with the beginner box and it says character name, player name, and then an underline, and then gloom master, and it's already printed in ink. Joe. Joe. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> we'll save you the time. Uh, Skid, thank you for joining, uh, good buddy. You and I commiserated pre-show as we were you know, getting into this, uh, about to record this, uh, how terrified we are because of how complicated yeah. Gloomhaven is. It's really complicated. And we've, we've played a lot of 
Gloomhaven, the board game together and the computer game, mm-hmm. but we've only done this once. And this is, uh, so I, I feel like I have a handle on sort of the terminology and a lot of the basics. Yeah. The, the concepts. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I'm terrified. <laughs> also <laughs> because it is uh, notoriously difficult, right? It is always right. a, a really hard challenge tactically to, to play Gloomhaven. And so I'm not going to get bogged yeah. down in it. I'm not going to worry too much about, you know, making little mistakes here and there and stuff like that, because what I want to show off in this, what I want us all to show off is what happens when you take something that's as tactically rich as, as Gloomhaven and then put it in, in an RPG environment. That's why I'm so thrilled to have a slate of fantastic improvisers here because we're going to bring story elements into this and character <laughs> motivations. And we're going to show off some uh, where we can, you know, some new elements that are being built into the rule set that were not there even uh, back in August when we first created characters, which are things like factions and faction goals and missions and that kind of stuff. So I'm really uh, interested and excited to explore some of that stuff uh, with you guys tonight. That reminds me, if you guys don't know, we actually created these characters together uh, while we were at Gen Con. And we did it in the Gen Con booth. So, and that video is actually up on uh, YouTube, uh, on our YouTube channel at the Glass Cannon Network. So, if you want to check out uh, the the creation of these characters, you can you can do that there. There was no story done at that point. We really just sort of uh, created, went through the list as they had it at that time to create characters and and made them. And so tonight we get to just dive right in. And it was so nice. I, we were so tired though. Yeah. <laughs> we were Wasn't tired. it Sunday? Was it? Yeah, it was, it was Sunday. Sunday. The last day. All we of our all voices were sounded gone. like this. We <laughs> sounded crazy. Yeah. I, I looked uh, just horrible. Just horrible. <laughs> my eye, uh, bags under my eyes. And like, just, and Sydney didn't get me tea. Remember, all I needed oh, was a single cup of tea to get Lesson, in the zone. Lesson why learned. Did, why did I drink your tea? You Joe didn't forced like it? you. Joe no, forced you. No, you desperately yeah. needed it too. We both needed it. And I was like, I'll just... This is I'll, like I'll take drunk, the bullet on this. We one. all had like drunk people brains. Like it was like you need this tea more than me. And Joe was like, I didn't even order a tea. And Joe was like, You gotta have this one. And he's meanwhile sitting there like, mm, 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 Sorry. Mm. You got me a like, coffee, no one which has I didn't the ask tea. For. Yeah, no one has tea. And we still had fun. So that says a lot about how fun this RPG well, is. Yeah, and, I think, <laughs> really fun. and I think that our like, whatever state of mind we were in, uh, <laughs> definitely contributed to the creation of these individual characters. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, particu- well, I don't want to go into names at this well, look, stage. In fact, one of these characters is unnamed. Josephine's Josephine. character was oh. never named oh. on air. Josephine. So I'm excited to find out what that is. Uh, I'm also excited to find out if she actually did ever name the character. Did you ever name the character? I did it like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Three months to decide. We're going to be the blown away. The hardest blown part. Blown away with this name. Yeah. It is. Um, you want to do it right. You want to take your time. Rather than have you guys go into detail uh, about um, who your characters are, what the builds are, all that kind of stuff, uh, I'm going to skip that. Let's just try to have that come out as part of uh, playing the game because we got to get into it. We only have so much time. You know, it's it's a classic one shot situation. I mean, like in character creation, we did kind of go over. We did some like character relations. Absolutely. It's out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you talked about how tactical this game is and that I made 100% RP, <laughs> like background <laughs> skill choices and everything. I was like, okay, okay. No, it's going to be good, good, good. Cool, amazing. Cool, cool. Great. I mean, look, it's it's a learning journey for all of us. I'm really uh, interested to see how these tactical card based sort of abilities and and uh, combat transitioning to exploration sort of mode kind of things are going to to play here so we'll we'll, we'll figure it out together and i'm really looking forward to it uh let's start the one shot remembering this is a one shot so oh, yeah. uh so go big you know, and go, go home yeah go, go yeah. big, go big and then, go home. then go home yeah <laughs> and then, <laughs> Yeah, uh, all the Perfect. abilities. Are you prepared, Joe? Like, we're just gonna use all of them. Yeah, I know. Throwing I know. them at you. 
<laughs> you know how I play. I'll try and use every single thing in every conceivable uh, context possible. So I thought about this pre-show, Paula, and I sort of uh, have early decided to just say yes to everything you want to do and just yes! see what happens. Good. So, oh, <laughs> oh, my Jared, person, I have a new favorite my grandfather's GM. pocket watch that I've had for 15 years comes into play. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Yes. I've been sitting on that one. My Randomly rolled watch. item finally means something. Finally. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do it. We're going to uh, open our show in, let's see, uh, trying to get the music right here. Okay, let's open in a dingy, dark, almost like cellar. It's a dungeon. It's a dungeon. Let's call it what it is. It's a dungeon. It's almost a cellar. You mean a dungeon? Does it have bars? We have like a, a habit here at the Glass bars. Cannon Network of trying to not give away any information without a proper knowledge <laughs> check. Know. And in so doing, we end up saying really stupid, really <laughs> stupid <laughs> things. We just started, guys. It's like an underground it's like a- Jail. A subterranean <laughs> room that you're not allowed to leave. Ga- gowl. Gowl. <laughs> oh, yes. A gowl. We open up and the camera is just floating along this platform. Spooky. And it's torch lit. We see stone walls and to our right, there's a railing that is built to the to the end of the platform so that if you were to look over that railing, it kind of falls away into darkness or maybe down in the distance, you see some small fire lights down in the distance as well, giving you the indication that there are multiple levels to this dungeon and an opening in between them. To our left, cells, cell after cell, and they're so dark inside. And our, our vision is so kind of blinded by the, the torchlight that's in the, the hallway area or the platform area that it's hard to make out the figures inside. Perhaps small cots or, or just stone slabs where lumps are lying on them. Can't even tell uh, what sort of ancestry you're looking at or, or, or anything like that. Size is hard to determine as well. Everybody seems to be asleep. This is uh, late, late in the evening. You may hear the echoing footsteps of a guard somewhere in the distance echoing through this open cavern that goes between the floors. And then we kind of come around into this one cell and the camera focuses in through the bars and we see a small figure begin to rustle, seemingly waking up. Paula, describe what we see. You see a small, furry, rat-like creature with uh, a a vermling, one might say, if they had a successful (laughs) knowledge check, um, (laughs) with really, like, tangled, mussed-up kind of hair that's kind of singed on the ends, whiskers that are kind of, like, bent and tangled. It's got a real, like, kind of, (laughs) like... kind of look to them Um, (laughs) from under they wake up from under their pillow they pull out some homemade goggles made out of you can tell like the bottoms of uh, like jars or drinking glasses that they frittered away and then like cut out the bottoms of the so they can everything's kind of magnified (laughs) they put those on and then they go over to a little bit of the stone in the corner of their wall. Now, there's no poster over this sectional wall because it's not the Shawshank Redemption, but the rock does come loose, and they pull out a couple of the little rocks they've created, a little, like, cubby. And inside the cubby, (laughs) a contraption, a gadget, one might say, something they've been tinkering on. They kind of squeeze themselves up in with the little gadget. They're, yeah, yeah, I think it's ready. Tonight's the night. And this gadget has like a 
you don't even know how they got together all the things they needed to make this, but it's got almost like a little small, like, bellows kind of on the end and a little spot for um like a like there's some sort of like liquid in there that you think might be flammable but just a little just a little bit and then that leads to like a (laughs) something that looks like it'll fit right into the lock of perhaps a cell this seems like contraband (laughs) Oh, yeah. This is oh, like yeah, your apartment. Is. You live here. Like, this is, you got a lot of stuff. You don't know how I got all these things, and you don't want to know, but I got them. Okay? I got these things, and I tinkered them together, and I made it happen, and it may look like it's strung together with chewing gum and wire. But I think this is going to work. Okay, Tonight who are we, we looking out. at? Who are we looking at? Who is You're this? are looking at Spracket. <laughs> the Vermling Tinkerer. Spracket the Vermling Tinkerer. Yeah. And I'm presuming you're going to use this gadget to get <laughs> oh, out yeah. of your cell. I'm using this gadget. tonight's the night. And tonight's the night. I take it. I scurry over to my uh, the door. I look. Do I see anyone? Are all the guards asleep? <laughs> Give me a focus yeah. check. Oh, I just flip over a card. Yep, you flip over a card, you look at the hex number that it has on it, and then add your focus to that. That would be a four. Two and two. A A total of a four. (laughs) Total of a four. For everybody's like general um, (laughs) for everybody's general understanding of the mechanics for these kind of checks, six to eight is generally the difficulty number for a moderately difficult task. You can set a number lower than six to eight. You can set a number higher than six to eight. I think it maxes around 16 or 18 or something like that is considered like Im- nearly impossible. You would have to crit. And there is a crit card in there. <laughs> With a four, you do not see or hear any guards nearby. Oh, no. That's right. I bet they're all asleep and it doesn't <laughs> matter anyway. So I take what looked like the little like key kind of bit. I kind of reach out. It's got a little like tube on it and I reach out and I put it into the keyhole of my cell and I on the billows and it sends it basically like forces uh, air into this uh, flammable liquid which now sends an intense burst of heat through that little tube into the little thing I stuck into the lock to melt it (sighs) To melt the lo- a localized melting. All right, give it's me. It's kind of like an explosion, but very localized. All right, so what do you want to do here? Is this does this require finesse, or do you think this is more of a knowledge based on your skill building this thing? What do you think you want to check? I think this here? is knowledge based on my skill of building this and the amount of time I've spent looking through the lock and figuring out exactly how well, to melt it to make it release. You described a spectacular uh, little invention. So give yourself advantage on the check. So you'll draw two (gasps) cards, take the better one, and then add your knowledge to it. (gasps) Ooh, baby. I'm going to show you because I'm excited. So a three, nah, son. A six, (laughs) plus... I actually have... So I have three knowledge, but because of my faction, I get a plus one knowledge. So I think I got four knowledge. So an adjusted so 10? 10? So that's 10. <laughs> Sorry, 10. I'm adding. I'm like just really excited about it. So that's why I broke <laughs> it all down for you. I won't do that for every check. All right. So <laughs> take those 10. cards. Take those cards and set them aside. You are not going to oh. reshuffle that deck until you hit uh, a crit or a fumble. Uh, so you're plus okay. two. And there's only one plus two in your deck. The six <gasps> there. There's only one. And now it's gone until you crit Ooh, or fumble. Up. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, mm. Way to take you, my win and make you, it seem kind of like a loss. But you <laughs> melt. No, I'm just letting people know the stakes here, okay? <laughs> that card is awesome, but now you're not going to yeah. do that again without a reshuffle. So you right. you melt that the interior of the lock, and it, ka-tunk, ka-tunk, it loosens, but it makes this sound that kind of reverberates around a little bit. But you don't hear any change, and you are able to slide open your cell. What is your next plan? I am going to find my fellow diminutive friend. Who's and that? Try and bust them out. That is Arpeggio. I'm looking for Arpeggio. It's me. 
Arpeggio. Uh, <laughs> okay. Your names. So as you start moving, you start moving quietly along the cells, trying to not disturb anyone. A quattrel is generally a very small uh, mm -hmm. sized creature, similar to a vermling. Uh, in, or I'm sorry, you are a vermling. Uh, I am a vermling. Sydney, mm -hmm. you are the quattrel, right? Yeah, yeah but so, similar, similar to a vermling. Similar in size. Um, as this vermling uh, named Spracket starts sneaking through the dungeon, you see that the, the dungeon's layout seems to be uh, somewhat of a figure eight in a way. So this area where you are, where there's a platform and cells on one side and then a drop off, on the other side, there are more cells, but there's a gap in between them. They kind of come together in a central area where stairs go up and down between the levels. And then past the stairs on the other side is another, like uh, the left wing and the right wing. So on the left wing, there's another series of, uh, of uh, cells that are kind of circular in nature, almost uh, more of an oval in nature with a gap in the middle. So you get to these stairs and we see you start going down the stairs because uh, Arpeggio is one level below you. In fact, Arpeggio is in the cell directly below you. Yes. So you go over to the central area, mm -hmm. you work your way down, then you start working your way back toward where your cell was on that side. We cut into Arpeggio's cell, and what do we see, Sydney? Uh, Arpeggio, maybe you knew that Arpeggio was right below you because you could hear them. Because Always. Arpeggio was always singing and just didn't never care. Never shuts up. Never shuts up. <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And the guard, you know, and she, she would do it as a tactic too to like piss off the guards because there was nothing they could do. What are they going to do? Beat her up? So, you know, constantly. Yes. Yeah. They, I mean, yeah, yes. They, they could Beat, do that. And they her. would. They would. <laughs> and she would just smile and take it knowing that. So she's that. taken a few beatings. Yeah, and she would sing, and maybe you hear now, like, quietly drifting as you're, like, coming down. She doesn't care that people are sleeping. You just hear, like, rise up, rise up, voices unite against the darkness. We'll bring light from every corner, every lane to free our land from the regime's chains. And she's just, like, is singing these, like, powerful songs that put her in jail. <laughs> about <laughs> going against this tyrannical, like we joke that it was like this fascist regime, but I think like, mm -hmm. it is a fascist regime and she is for the people. Uh, she's for the small people. She's for the vermlings. Like she's this sort of like artistic radical, uh, this artist radical, you know, who like sprays her graffiti and, and sings her songs and is like, come what may. So you hear her singing. So completely different from Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of like the, kind of like the opposite of me. I'm sort of like a straight laced financial girl. Um, <laughs> All right, you hear this singing. Oh, and, and it's, I'm a, and and it's I'm kind a quattrel, of quattrel. So I'm cute. I have yes. a floppy little hat on, and that's what. But I you look said like. that you, you said that you like align with the vermlings. Yeah. So okay. So this is very interesting that also before I even picked a faction that Paula and I had like connected our characters. We were like, we're the little guys. Mm. So there's this faction called the Finders and they're known as the Toon Finders. They're a troop of traveling vermlings who are basically like traveling entertainers. And a lot of people are like, absolutely not your vermlings disgusting, but the people who help them and like give them shelter, give them food. They do the same. They like help and mostly like poor people. Um, they sing for them. And it, I love this. It says they collect, they find their source of misery or joy. And then they tailor their performances to remove the people's misery and enhance their joy. Aww. So they like, they use misery against their enemies and they use joy to uplift the people. And I think that is like so arpeggio shit. So she kind of got in with the vermlings. So maybe this is how I met bracket i don't know okay so yeah so she has a lot of vermling allies yeah. uh yeah All my so friends you, are you're vermlings. kind of the outsider in that group but they've accepted you because of your sooth singing all right so this are, song sorry is, are quattrals kind of like are they like cyborgs are they no so they're a race of people they're i asked this too because they look robotic in nature but they're basically they're a race they're very good at tinkering. So they've made all of these like enhancements and a lot of them have like all these cool like armor sort of looking like robotic things about them. 
but not um, not arpeggio. Arpeggio is pretty uh, fleshy. But they have like a power claw, right? Don't they? I no, guess. That's... Is that? You know, uh, I don't. I, it seems like it's implanted in them, but I don't. If it's. No, I think that, I thought that was a different one. Crag hearts have a. That's the crag heart, right? That's the crag heart. Yeah, that's the crag heart. They have like a um, okay. geological. Oh, oh. I don't know. Well, we might be wrong. We might be wrong. I know Crag does have a thing, but I don't know about it. To to read from the Quattro Uh. entry, their scientific institutions on the Eastern continent have developed a myriad of technological advancements, bionics and prosthetics used to enhance their own abilities. Only a fool would shun a Quattro's offer for help. So uh, it doesn't sound like it's naturally inborn to them or anything, but it does sound like it has been an ancestral pursuit uh, of their people in general that they pursue bionics and prosthetics to enhance their abilities. Yeah, maybe so, Arpeggio so has you some. Could, yeah, you could have some uh, some enhancements, which is kind of cool. It's like a cyberpunk sooth singer. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get back to it. We hear this voice echoing <sighs> through the dungeon and perhaps our other characters hear it as well. Perhaps the song was meant to be sung tonight to 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 make sure everyone knows it's on. It's maybe the this call. is the maybe night. this is the the signal. You hear some voice two levels down and across the gap uh, from you, uh, arpeggio. It's just like shut up, <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of like crosses her arms and huffs. Nobody appreciates anything in this dingy cell. What time? What time is it? What? And she kind of starts pacing around. She's so sick of being in here, and she's like, "Where is Sprocket? Where is Sprocket?" All right, Sprocket comes out of the shadows using this song and the and the requisite uh, yelling uh, prisoner to cover uh, her footfalls. And uh, Sprocket, go ahead and give me a focus check. You're now approaching the cell. You're one cell away. Look, okay. From arpeggio. The <laughs> Spracket is so excited about what's about to happen and getting to show off this new gadget and free their friends. And it's only a four again. Just letting you know. It's four just again. a four total. I'm not good at focusing. You get see, these bad cards out of my deck, You though. see directly across the gap from the cell where you're about to institute, use your gadget again to try to mm-hmm. open this cell, I presume, you see a shadow pass <gasps> by a torch and then pass by Locking another torch. Against the wall. It seems like a guard walking on the other side. Do I see, do I see Spracket? You do not. Oh, okay. And what are you doing? You're staying completely still? I flatten against the wall and stay completely still, thinking if uh, I don't move, they won't see me. This figure goes down toward the end of this figure eight, begins to turn, and is now walking down toward you. Uh oh. But it's still I pretty far fun. in the distance. Okay, okay. Is there. Uh, oh, so what's their walking path? Are they going to get all the way to me? Or. The, oh boy. Um, it seems like they're coming I... to you, like they're doing a loop around this level. Okay, okay, I, and they're coming toward, okay, and, and they're in between. You better act quick. Arpeggio's cell is in between me and them? Yes. Okay, I, <laughs> uh, I back up, I back up, I back up, I back up, I back up. Okay, you back up, and now you back out of this area, back into the central hub. You know you yeah. have two <clears throat> other people whose cells you can open. They're both on one more floor below. They're on that same floor, or you can try to wait out this guard and circle back around to get Arpeggio. But our, the path of the guard is taking them pa- past Arpeggio's cell right now. With every okay. heartbeat, every shout, we tear down walls, cast shadows out for love, for freedom, <gasps> dreams anew. She's just like singing out, and then she sees the so guard good. coming, Arpeggio does. And then you hear, click. Click the, the the clank of the boots uh, coming near, and maybe a shadow cast on the floor in front of your cell. There's nothing together we can't do. Hello. <laughs> and then the guard just stops in front of your cell. 
penny for your thoughts or a penny for mine if you care to spare some change. (laughs) (laughs) Guard just turns and you see, half lit by the torchlight, this human face in a helm that is kind of like like a magneto helm. So it's sort of like, you know, uh, cut around the eyes like this, but then it comes down (laughs) to the sides of the face, uh, this helm, so you can barely kind of see one eye. This entire side of the guard is covered in complete blackness. It turns, Mm -hmm. looks at you. Quiet down. (laughs) Ah, are my neighbors complaining again? Nobody appreciates any of my music down here. Say, do you have the time? Turns. Toodaloo, I'll see you tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And walks out of sight toward the middle. What did you do, Paula? What did Spracket I, while do? That distra- while that distraction was happening, Spracket went, okay, I'll come back, and went down to the next level to get... <laughs> Arpeggio's got this. Their other friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who are, who are you getting next? I will go, okay, we might need some muscle because there are more guards out than I realize, so let's go to Jason Charles Miller. <laughs> I don't know what your character named himself. I don't know what your name is. I can't remember. I know. This, this, your this I name, I believe, something. is very emblematic of day four at Gen Con. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, what, what, so what was let's it? So let's go to this cell. Let's cut oh, into boy. this cell. Skid, describe what we see. <laughs> All right, so we see a massive Inox and even more... Uh, than usual, like built and muscular Inox. It's like shadow boxing in his cell. And I think ordinarily, I don't know if he has them now, but I think ordinarily he has like all kinds of jewelry, like a lot of like gold jewelry and everything. Probably not allowed to have it here. So in which case he really misses it. But he's mm. just like, as you see, uh, the uh, the immense imposing form of one Inox Bronson. Oh. <laughs> I forgot that's what Inox his name Bronson was. is shadow boxing in his cell and then suddenly <laughs> you see this small shadow of a tiny creature comes up outside your cell, Inox. Hey. You were expecting this. Yeah. And right. without even saying anything, I look, I look. I put the little thing in the lock, and I on the bellows to heat and heat it up. Okay. Knowledge check with advantage. <sighs> oh, I critted, and I had a good uh, card. Wow. So oh, oh, so there are two plus twos in there. Maybe I got that mistaken. Oh, well. uh, or I have a large deck of cards. Oh, so you crit. I crit. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I shuffle. Okay, you so are so oh yeah, you are so smooth with this, so quiet. It just opens up the cell, doesn't make a sound. The guard that's just upstairs now, rotating around that level, uh, does not hear you at all. And I knock Bronson. You see this cell door open, and it's almost as if it's in a vacuum. It's so quiet. It slides open, and then suddenly. Like, you don't even know how, how they got there. They were so fast. There is a furry face right in front of yours. <laughs> like, I scurried up. <laughs> Ready? Let's go. <laughs> tonight's the night. I knock tonight's the night. And you get brushed by my little, like, frayed whiskers. Oh, my God. That's so <laughs> uh, Skip, do you, do you respond? <laughs> Time to get the band back together. Yes. <laughs> the jam band. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, all right. You two slip out. Who, what's the plan next? And who's in charge? Is it, uh, is it Spracket still? Is leading the way here? Yeah, I'm the brains of this operation. All right. <laughs> so. Where are we going next? Now we got to go get our, our nameless person, our sun caster. Is that what are you called again? Sun keeper. Sun keeper. Sun keeper. Sun keeper. The sun keeper, time yeah. To go get the sun keeper because there's a guard who's really keeping tabs on Arpeggio. 
Okay, so the Sun Keeper is across the middle section on the other side, this same level though. So oh you start, gosh, you start scurrying so over there and uh, you look up Inox Bronson and see on the level above you, a guard is walking the hall but has not looked down at you. Right now you're in some light. If you head toward the middle, you'll be in, in darkness. Uh, I try to do that. All right, you go into the darkness. Go ahead and give me a finesse check to your oh, very yeah. large dude. Let's let's it's not, not uh, make specialty. any noise to attract any attention. Yeah, you like dumped all those stats, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I critted though. <gasps> wow! Yeah. Amazing. Oh, and a reminder, Paul, to reshuffle your deck if you didn't already. I did it. All right, perfect. Thank you. And then Skid, you reshuffle your deck. Amazing. A crit. So. Uh, really contrary to your normal abilities of, uh, of being light of foot. <laughs> you slip into the shadows. We see the guard turn and look over the edge toward your area. Doesn't seem to react and then keeps walking. Yes. All right, we head over and now we look into the final cell. What do we see, Josephine? Well, uh, so perhaps you see a lithe figure with I forget how I describe it, but this is how they look. Uh, soft pink skin, white tussled uh, curled hair going down to like their chin. They're really attractive. They've got these piercing like red, blood red eyes. They have a forked tail. And I don't know what they're still allowed to wear. Is there like a uniform they've been given or are they somewhat in their regular attire they can be in regular attire i would so you know not like, like armor or jewelry yeah, or anything yeah. like that but like the clothes you came in with you could still have well the yeah. clothes are nice like silks of gold and white just sort of adorning their very toned body and <laughs> as spracket approaches it's perhaps with a moment of pause as Dazzle, that's me, is Dazzle. Dazzle. speaking, <laughs> is, appears to be speaking to a guard. Oh. Oh, what? Okay. Outside of their cell. Okay. And they're leaning against the bars. They've got an arm up on a bar and it's. Uh, hey. <laughs> is, this a, is this a man guard or a lady guard? Um, let's make it a man guard. I don't know. That sounds like another accessory than an actual human being, but <laughs> um, man guard. Man guard. Dazzler. Dazzler. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. What and uh, what, and what are you saying? <clears throat> My dear God, you've been uh, blessed today, nay, dazzled by my presence and the blessings of those that give us light. I can see it within you and you have yet to be saved. Now how about you go and command everyone in this block, all of your god friends, to go take this smoke break for the next hour. <laughs> and I'm using a tactical order, yeah. which means a single non-hostile creature has to complete a simple task for me that takes no more than one minute to complete. They happily comply and don't realize they didn't have a choice but to do it until an hour later. Wow. That's great. Right. So this is what, a skill? Yes, this is this is a Sunkeeper skill. Wow. Jedi mind trick. Jedi and, mind trick. And this is going to be so helpful. Yeah. And you are, oh, that's amazing. And I got to discard a card, so I'm and discarding. you're discarding a card. A card. Okay, and how many cards do you have in your deck? Is it 11-ish? 11, so now I'm down to 10. 11, all right, now down to 10 for the day. And you say this to the guard, and we just see this guard who, like, uh, laughed for a second. <laughs> that's a really good idea. And just, like, turns and walks away almost in a fugue state and starts walking into the middle section past uh, Inox Bronson and Spracket and start and looks at the two of you. It's just like, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> and then starts walking up the stairs. <laughs> just completely out of it. This is this is wild. This is wild. Uh, 
so you don't even have to do an influence check for that. That's just you get that like <laughs> once a day or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, wow, that's awesome. Can I? Yeah, it's discard. I discarded a stamina card. Could I theoretically just do it over and over again? Maybe. I don't know. I don't if know. I pass out. So I'm just like. <laughs> I can ask no more. <laughs> <laughs> I can ask no more. No, it, it seems like such a strong thing that feels like a sort of once a day, but maybe maybe it's like our backgrounds where we've expended it, you know, until we rest or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, sounds yeah, good. Because my, my background skill is pretty strong too, and there's no apparent limitation on it, so that would be... It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. But in this case, we in the story, we just see this mind-controlled guard goes upstairs and Inox and Spracket come outside your cell. And I'm just going to roll over your crit, in fact, to uh, say that your gadget is working right. so well that you don't even have to roll on this next one. And the guard is not so. even nearby, so even a little noise wouldn't matter. And you... Sh- Open up the cell. While the for door dazzle. opens, so I Spracket does do a little like. <laughs> Many <laughs> blessings what just upon so you. So just to, to describe <laughs> for the audio audience, what Spracket did was clicked his teeth, I guess, <laughs> and winked seventeen winked. times. A lot of times, <laughs> <laughs> but in a very specific order. They all, all the winks oh, yeah. mean different things, and we all know yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Very okay. uh, it's, like, uh, good to see you, my fine furry friend. It is always good to gaze upon your beauty. <laughs> <laughs> no, stop, stop, stop. No, go on. <laughs> you know. Let's go. We gotta get our Beggio. There was a guard outside the cell. I don't know. It might be hard to. We might need help. Oh, I think they'll be all right. The guards have seen the light. Hey, <laughs> let's go get up as you. All right, so you guys, out of this joint. you sneak back and you head back up and over to Arpeggio's cell. All right, cell. here's my question, because everyone had such a cool thing. If <laughs> I, you spent eight you minutes singing, singing a song, an original <laughs> song. Songs. I have more to sing. Um, that was nothing. <laughs> that was nothing. If I wanted to try to squeeze through these bars because I'm a tiny creature. Could I use finesse and could I use my background, one of my background cards that says weird trick. (laughs) And I get to add to my finesse if I incorporate my weird trick and I have an idea. (laughs) I think my my weird trick is because quattrals have sort of like bionic components and they can alter their bodies and stuff. I think Quattro has like a crazy thing where she can dislocate her shoulders without pain and she can like make her body really, really tiny and she uses it to get out of sticky situations. She's done this before and I think she was waiting for the perfect opportune moment when everybody else was like, their whole plan was coming to together. She's gonna pop her shoulders and they just kind of like <laughs> go behind her, like fold backward behind her and then she's oh. gonna turn sideways, but it doesn't hurt her and she just goes, <laughs> And she's gonna try to squeeze through the bars. Um. Okay. I get a plus to my finesse. I promised I'd say yes. Uh, Gotta love when the GM goes. Okay. That's literally from the first. So this dungeon that you could have walked out of the cell at any point, you just (laughs) decided not to until tonight. Hey, for Arpeg- various reasons. Arpeggio's a badass. She knows when to pick her moments. Well, there was a guard uh, there before. There was a yeah. guard. Yep. It wouldn't have made sense. Yep, wouldn't have made sense. Now this makes sense now. <laughs> uh, all right, sense, so go Joe. ahead and take the bonus, but uh, the cell bars are designed specifically to keep even small creatures uh, captured, so you're going to have disadvantage on the mm. check. But if you can still pull it off, it's not going to be a high DN, but you have to have disadvantage. So, so go I ahead. So I pull two, two pull cards. Pull two, take the lower, and add your uh, finesse with your boost and see okay. if you can hit a moderate uh, check. So I pull two cards. They both actually have threes. Um, yeah. So that's not terrible. So five, six, seven, that's an eight total. Oh. Yeah. That is a success. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, so she's got wow. these like long fingers, like her, her limbs are kind of elongated and then she just like, <laughs> and she's, squ- and it's Stop kind of doing dis- that, please. It <laughs> yeah. looks like you are actually dislocating your shoulders. She's like literally the girl at the party who's like, want to see something crazy? And she like does like a <laughs> fucked up arm thing. Um, so she squeezes through the bars and then she just like, she doesn't even care. She's like quietly whistling and walking down. Okay, but this requires you to discard a card from your stamina. Does it not? I don't know. Was it a skill? Does, it was one of my background. Background? Backgrounds? Okay, say, no. Yeah, oh. th- th- then you just turn it, over the background. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I used it. That's my weird trick. Okay, weird trick is, is dislocating your own shoulders. Let's see if that comes back into play. You're good. You're, <laughs> you're, yeah, all right, so you run into oh, her. What do you say? What? What do you do? I, I just, like, hold the contraption, then my gadget out in front of her. What's the... I made oh, this. I made oh, this to get this? you out. You can just get out on your own? This is so sweet. I love what you've made. We'll use it next time. Come on, we should go. I am so glad that oh. we're all back here together. Oh, my gosh, I didn't my even friends see... friends all oh. here. Huddle up, huddle up. Yes, join hands in prayer. Yes, we always join hands. This is what we do. (laughs) Hey, hey! You hear coming from the cell right right next to you, (laughs) where you guys are now huddling up to discuss (laughs) your escape, I guess. Uh, You hear a voice come from the darkness, and then coming out from back in the back of the cell, you see a human comes into the light. A human? A little scraggly a prisoner, uh, long black uh, curly hair, kind of partially in his eyes, a little bit dirty face, and you know this prisoner. This is Hector, Hector Grimclaw. And he comes stumbling out into the light, and he was uh, uh, kept awake, clearly, by your, your singing. And he comes up to the bars. He's just like, how did you get out? What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you leaving? What, what is he in for? Yeah, do we know? Give me a knowledge check. Can we all do it? Okay. Yeah, you can all do it. Okay. I don't oh, have good knowledge. Baby. Well, it's an eight. Me oh, too. wait. Is the. Sorry, there's no hex on this. Is the times two a crit? Yes. yes. It's a crit. Yeah. Oh, so it's what is my number? What is my. You then double your base, I believe. I believe that's okay. how it works. Double my base? Uh, yeah, in your knowledge. What's your knowledge skill point? One. So you get a two. Damn it. I believe. Well, um, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what... Hector, hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, perhaps I have that wrong. I don't know if crit is an automatic success, but um, for right now, I'm going to say uh, you do not know what he's in for. He has been always very secretive about uh, what he was in for. But you don't know him to be a particularly violent uh, prisoner, but you do know him to be a little bit, a little cocked in the head, uh, a little, a little crazy. But uh, I think that maybe Arpeggio even uh, likes uh, Hector a little bit. Um, they have a similar, uh, they, they definitely commiserate on uh, their anti-establishment kind of vibe. Uh, and he's like, what is that? What'd you make there? She puts her head on the bar. What is that? Looking at your uh, contraption, Spracket. Did our did uh, Spracket and I's knowledge checks pass the test or no? No, an eight was not uh, enough. Oh, oh okay. Hector. So you, he, he has never shared with you what he was in for, and he's just holding okay, the okay. bars, and he's like, what is that? This is my gadget. I do have one charge left. Since I didn't need to use it on Arpeggio, I could uh, well, melt your well, lock and get wait, you out. Wait, and open wait, up and I can help you. Open it up and I can help you out. We, he can help us. Mr. Grimclaw, do you seek to wish the light? Do you wish to seek the light even? (laughs) Do you seek to wish the light? I I always wish wish the light. I said what I said. (laughs) I said what I said. (laughs) I said what I said. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to do an influence check for him. And he says, yeah. Yeah, anything to get out of here. Anything. Help me, please. If you can open this up, I, I can help you out. Um, Can I do... Five hands would, are better than four. Five hands are better in, than four, right? An we could use a roadie. 
<laughs> what did you say, Skip? We could use a roadie. It's just the four of us. <laughs> I'm tired of having to carry all the equipment by myself. <laughs> Oh, but you're so strong. I know, but it doesn't mean I should have to do everything that requires physical labor. No, that's a good point. You know, Hector, you've been such a sweetie. I think we should let him out. Well, yeah. uh, all right. Um, is there like an like an insight, like sort of like reading this dude? Oh, yeah. Sort of check I could do? Yeah, I think you could do... Focus. Um, so what is it? It's athletics, finesse, focus, knowledge, and what am I missing? Influence. 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 Um, yeah, Maybe do a influence. focus. Do a focus to see if he's like intending to uh, slip a knife in your back the second he gets out of the cell. You can you, you can use focus to determine if somebody's being deceitful. Um, and that is a a um, contested check. Uh, okay. With the uh, with his influence check, and okay. with a five, you do not get the sense that you get the sense that he will do anything to get out of this cell, and okay. that he can help you uh, in some way, perhaps, or he might slow you down. Uh, it's up to you. Okay, uh, let's let him out. Join us in prayer, Mister Grimclaw, for the people. <laughs> I'll put my little tip into the lock and what? Okay. The last one. Now, the last one sometimes gets a little bit tricksy, you know? Like, there's the, the last little bit of liquid in here can be kind of volatile, so maybe step back from the door, Hector. All right, so he steps and back, I'm... and you have advantage on this check. Again, we're doing knowledge for this. All right, now, whoo, on the bellows. <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, it again! Wow. You know what? I've decided this game cannot be played remotely. I need to double check Paula's deck before. <laughs> I'm looking through it right now. <laughs> you need to double check it yourself. You're like, wait a minute. How many are we supposed to have in here? Paula, this is very un-Paula. I know. This quote unquote rolling. This randomizer deck is working working out. That's right. Forget the dice. Give me a deck. Now, normally my curse extends to any oh. luck-based check, but... Um, Okay. We, well, great. We you, you slip it open, and he's like, "Thank you, thank you." You think that? What's What's the plan? And at this point, um, you guys have a plan that that he is not is not in on, and uh, I need you guys to kind of decide what what the plan is. Okay. So you would have your characters would have already kind of discussed this and and had an idea for for what it would be, but let's yeah. just take it out of that for a second, and you can kind of just talk as players here. Uh, because you've got two options. I'm going to give you two options for this one shot uh, for how you can get out of here. You can either have a, uh, in, in either case, it's going to be connected to a faction, okay? So Ooh. in one case, you're going to have a plan that was, in both cases, you're going to have a plan that was put in place by one of your factions that is designing to try to bust you out. You have to just get out of the immediate dungeon area, connect with agents of your faction, and they will scuttle you and the rest of your party away from uh, the dungeon. Now, you may be in some debt to that faction. You may have to uh, do some jobs for that faction after the fact, but that is, uh, that's the deal. So uh, the deal can come from one of two places. It can either come from uh, Josephine's faction, from Dazzle's faction, which is, what is it, the Red... Um, the Red Citizens. The Red Citizens. So that it can either come a plan from the Red Citizens where you guys would find a way to bust yourselves out with like straight up brawn up out of the front of the dungeon uh, through the guards, basically, and out the front into the stronghold of this city, which is called <laughs> Arid Point. It's not really a city. It's more of a fort, like a stronghold uh, in the Red Desert. And your faction has is waiting for you there tonight to pick you up as long as you can get out of the dungeon area. The uh, other option is for the finders, for uh, our soothsayers faction, who happens to know that deep below the uh, dungeon, which, and you guys would have kind of heard rumors about this on a very surface level, we can do knowledge checks later, but on a very surface level, you would know that in during construction of a lower level to the dungeon, there was something went wrong. 
uh, rumors are that they punched into something that was already existing down there that has caused a slowdown to the construction of the sixth level of the dungeon. And you don't know exactly what it is, but the uh, finders of which, um, sorry, I keep forgetting your names, uh, Arpeggio, Arpeggio is a member, uh, happen to believe that what they probably have punched into are a series of vermling warrens that are like ancient and like have been undisturbed probably for centuries. And if you can get underground, you can find your way completely out from the stronghold and fort entirely, but no one really knows the way. But if you can find your way through those warrens, there is a vermling settlement not far away where they will pick you up. So uh, the choice is yours as players. It's not really a choice you were put to as characters. As right. players, which faction approach and which way do you want to go? Do you want to try to go up and out the front door and then get out by the um, red citizens or down below and through the, the dark tunnels to who knows where and get picked up by the vermlings? Let's go down below. Yeah. The tunnels sound awesome. And also like the character would also be on board to be like, red citizens have got this. We should find some ancient vermling warrens. That sounds awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody agree fast enough? Yeah. Uh, all right, fantastic. While we get back into it, why don't you really quick uh, tell us about your faction quickly, Paula, because you haven't mentioned, I don't believe, uh, yes. uh, the faction that uh, Spracket is a member of. I am a member of the university, an offshoot of the learning institutions of the Eastern Continent and the Quattrol Research Fellowship. So I also just have uh, some experience with Quattrols. Um, I did some <laughs> studying. Uh, it's it's Such education is only available to the very wealthy or talented. Guess which one I am. <laughs> and... Um, our primary goal, it's talented. Uh, our primary goal is the accumulation of knowledge and delving into the mysteries of the unknown. <laughs> oh, this is just really cool so, uh, because you basically, uh, ancestry-wise, you guys have kind of flip-flopped what most vermlings would be, right? A, uh, a, yeah. a member of the finders and most quadrils would be a member of the university. But you guys are in reverse and you're, and you're buddies. Uh, so the quadril is a member of the vermling troop mm -hmm. and the vermling is a member of this quadril like academic society that uh, yeah. tinkers and creates their inventions and uh, et cetera. Yeah. We're breaking I, down walls. Here's the thing. <laughs> yes. <Ugh. laughs> Maybe I got myself caught on purpose for this jail because underneath this jail yes. is maybe a strange artifact or something I need to research for the university. Oh, and this was the best way in. We're Ooh. totally here on purpose. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, There's no way we this got This is by caught. design. This okay. is why Quadril had no really worries. Talented. Or this is why uh, Arpeggio had no worries about sneaking out. She yeah. was like, we're that's all easy. very that's easy. Yeah, we were all very go. laid back about it, and that is why. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. <laughs> it's a long con. Yeah. How long have we been here? Uh, like, 17 um, years. Yeah. <laughs> 17 <laughs> years. <laughs> Just waiting for a moment. It's Just a long con, I would say. An yeah. extremely, extremely long con. Entirely uh, too long con. <laughs> entirely too <laughs> long con. Well, uh, as usual, perfect Paula uh, is wonderful. And really, Paula, you have inadvertently brought out a a focus of this game um the rpg itself is not designed to be pure open play uh it, it can be you know you, you can kind of play it how you want but it is designed the way that they are designing it right now is is a kind of mission focused orientation so that typical game sessions uh even for a campaign are kind of broken down into mission sessions that may be one or two or three sessions long and then the characters kind of see where they're at and can move on cool. to different missions or different factions and even while doing missions they can have their own personal objectives within their factions and what their factions look for and, and that kind of thing so, uh, in order to gain reputation with their factions so it's very possible that the actual, you know, the, the mission that's happening here is a mission by the university to uncover uh, an ancient artifact below the, um, that's rumored to be below this dungeon. Uh, and right. let's say, let's say 
it is, I'm not going to get the name exactly right, but I remember this, this Gloomhaven item. Let's say it is the Ring of Elements. It's something like that. It's an actual Gloomhaven item. Uh, I don't know that it's like an actual ring. Uh, it, it may be, um, but uh, it is an extremely powerful artifact. Uh, we talked about this briefly in character creation, but elements are a very big part of the gloomhaven world they get infused when you do certain things some of you will see your abilities will infuse certain elements or use certain elements um you know uh you would know with your university training that the ring of elements let me know if you find it josephine on the list uh I'm, well, it, it, haven't found it <laughs> uh, basically it's an item that allows you to to spend any element to take any element to create any element. So you can basically oh. switch any existing element in the oh. moment, which is very wow. powerful artifact rumored to be below here. So anyway, uh, let's just, we're in profit a one shot. Let's do it. And yeah. uh, go ahead and, uh, and tell, tell me what you tell Hector when he says, what's the plan? Hector, <laughs> <laughs> do you know about the Tune Finders? You seemed familiar with my songs, so. Well, well, I've heard of them, sure, but I don't know a lot about them, no. Well, let's just say they're very close friends of mine, and they have a plan for us. You can be in on that plan if you can keep up, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We have to go down, not up. Can you keep up if we go down, not up? Down, down, I, I don't know. I don't know, they, they stopped working down there. They said that they, they couldn't go down anymore. There was something, something messed up was happening down there. Well, your cell is here and you're welcome to stay in it, but we have to go. Damn. Uh, and he's looking around, but I, I'm assuming you guys uh, are gonna keep moving. Hop to, hop to, yeah. hop to, hop to. Well, come mm -hmm. on, Hector, keep up. And All right, so you get to the middle and uh, <clears throat> you start going down the steps. At this point, the uh, distraction that you gave to that particular guard is over, I believe. I think it was only for a minute, right? Um, well, he can do it in a minute, but he doesn't realize. I mean, I asked him to he go. He doesn't tell realize his he was mentally manipulated for an hour. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so for right now, I'll say there uh, there is still a guard upstairs, but you don't see a second guard, and you are now moving down the steps in that central hub area uh, toward a an area that was that is rumored to be down below at the end of the steps. As you come to the end of these steps, you see the the makings. Um, well, actually, you're you're on the fifth floor, so the bottom floor, and there are still cells there. But before you get to all the cells, you see there is a doorway that is chained and locked. A wooden this is double a door, good sign. and and the door itself seems to be makeshift, almost as if it was just built during this construction process, and now it's got like, you know a chain and lock on it that's basically saying keep out you know mm. this is uh an, an unsafe zone at the moment um so yeah there's a door with a big lock on it what do you what do you do this has got to be it uh yes yeah, i try to like rip it. the door off its hinges oh. yeah. please bronson get it bronson show us your strength yeah what do you do is this an ability or are you talking about a, an, an athletics check well i'm going to use i'm going to do an athletics check but i'm also going to use an ability i'm going to use my strength trainer uh, background ability okay which uh if i i gain a bonus to my attribute check equal to my athletics divided by two round up if i show off my muscles before or while making the check <laughs> please <laughs> please show us oh your my strength. gosh yeah Amazing. Now step aside. <laughs> Rip it up. Gotta love the gun show. <laughs> Welcome to the gun Wish show. Wish I could get my bloody chains back. That is a fumble. Oh, <gasps> oh no. Oh, that is amazing. The no. first pull of Inox Bronsonian. Uh, okay. A fumble. Amazing. You go to s 
smash this makeshift wooden door in and it's like Ba-bam! And it breaks. It breaks right off of its hinges and like crashes into this sort of makeshift tunnel. And in the instant that it breaks through and you can see this path in, the, the path in is a little bit jarred by this, this door that's fallen off its hinges. Small creatures will have no problem getting through. Large creatures or, or an Inox in particular probably has to do an, uh, another check to to easily slip through but the fumble means that the echoing of this slamming door goes bop 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 up the stairs and you just hear Oi, what is that from the guards upstairs who begin sprinting down the steps you feel like you have mere seconds you can either rush through this doorway, but the Inox is going to have to make a check to get through, or you can just stay and fight the guards. Like th- these are kind of your options. They're going to be here in split seconds. Can I what do pray? You do? Oh. Can you pray? Can I sure. pray like in an ability way? Um, no, not right now because the the uh, I appreciate your prayer, but prayer is going to take at least a, a minute of time to do. I and this your is prayer, but that's going to do nothing. <laughs> Your prayers are no more use here. Uh, okay. Prayers I'm, are no more use here. I'm, I just want to wave everyone through. So go, yeah, yeah. go, Let's I'll just go through. through and can, can we grab um, Grimclaw on the way and kind of like try to shove him through for some extra strength? Because aren't we all a loving family? Can't we aid an ally and give them advantage on their checks? Did we all take that or did oh, I yeah. just take that? No, we I have. I have loving background. family. We both have loving family, you and I. All right, yeah. so here's what I'm going to say. Just family. in the interest of keeping it moving here, Hector is going to, as soon as that door opens up and he hears the yeah. guards, he panics and just sort of like runs through. And okay. then you're telling me the rest of you are all running through as well. And then that leaves uh, Inox Bronson outside and the, with the guards uh, approaching. And uh, Dazzle, like you are going to stay just on the other side of the door and uh, and do something to aid him in his uh, check to get through. Uh, okay. Doom. The two guards hit the bottom of the steps. Inox Bronson, you're standing there alone. Shing, shing. Two swords come out and they come charging at you. Um, this is interesting. I guess first tell me, are you trying to get into the door or are you going to try to fight these guys? If you I'm try gonna, to get into the door, you will be at a disadvantage when it comes to the start of a combat. I'm going to try to get through the door first. Okay. All right. So then that would be an athletics check to get through the door and uh, you get an aid from yes. Dazzle. And do you remind me how aid works? It, I mean, I don't think I don't know, but I think that you're, well, I, I think your thing just said you advantage. get a plus one, isn't it? It's advantage. You get advantage well, on. Well, that's the ability is doing the advantage, but aid is a separate. Oh, you oh, know. oh. But yeah, at least take advantage, and then yeah, a plus one will do. I forget. Uh, if, interesting. If you say that, we'll do that. Um, w- read the background to me real quick. The background is use when aiding an ally, so I'm aiding an ally um, to okay, give them advantage. Okay, that, that, that's fine. I don't know about capital A aid just yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, So let's just say uh, you give them advantage? Yeah. Amazing. All right, Skid, so you've got advantage right. on... Uh, you you could do it your way. You can use finesse to try to slip your large form through, or you could use athletics to just break again and just keep pummeling to, yeah, to get I'm- through. I'm just gonna like hammer at this thing with my shoulders, trying to like force my giant form through. <laughs> Boom! Oh! Yeah! Yes! I'll take the take the crit. That yeah! is amazing. Okay, so yeah. the intention here was that you're gonna slip through. The guards are running right after you, and they're gonna come in right after you. But since you crit, I will say you your athletics check allows you to. Punch your way through, and then turn around and push that door back right up, kind of where it was, yeah. and block block their way through. Thanks um, a lot, sunshine. But you're holding this door. <laughs> you're holding it, and they're they're pushing up against it. Uh, they're not able to get through just yet uh, against your strength, but um, the you know you can't do this forever because it's not on a hinge. The hinge is broke, mm. so you're kind of like holding them up, and they're trying to push through. I will say. Uh, you are bathed in darkness. Does anyone have any ability to 
create light or yes. to generate light or okay yes. what do you got i will i'm born on a cloudless noon my friend oh, that's <laughs> right. i just have that background i can just create light oh, oh, as wow. I, i'm like thanking the heavens Oh, thank you for keeping my friend safe here. And it's like light just erupts around us. Oh. Okay, so I'm actually, uh, I've got the tracker on my end. I am infusing light. So this isn't just light for your vision. It's also, and the element of light is not, so you are, this area is being lit. And also there's elemental light existing here that you could draw from for powers and stuff if you wanted to. So there is so a So we strong... technically in combat then? Uh, not at the moment, not at okay, the moment. Okay. Um, but so, so what this light does is, whoa, as it opens up, you guys see that there are all kinds of discarded, like tools and uh, large objects here just inside the tunnel. Because this is a big construction project that is now uh, gone slow, right? That has like been ab semi abandoned. So there's not only tools, there's also like large objects. Tell me what you Let's guys push stuff do up next. Against the door. Oh, to oh. keep them from being able to kill them. We need something to prop the door up so That's they can't just a, come in after us. Yeah, right? if there's That's anything we can idea. block the door with. Okay. Uh, I'll, great idea. I'm going to hold it s s fast until like we can pile enough crap in front I of it. I pick up stuff. Okay, great. All right, I have I have the stat here. Let's do an opposed uh, athletics check skid. or uh, It's called okay. a contested check. So I'm going to do a contested check with a level one guards athletics uh, and I am going to take advantage on this. Uh, actually, no, you know what? I'm going to give myself advantage uh, for having two versus one, and I'm going to give you advantage for everybody putting uh, stuff up there as everybody's racing to put stuff up there. So okay. uh, let's let's go ahead and pull and see what we get. Oh, wow. Uh, That's a bad draw for me. Oh, no. Oh no! Oh, it was a bad draw. It was a bad uh, draw for me too. Well, two is five, you. Still? Five is my total. And four <gasps> is my total. <gasps> oh! I, yes, I, my highest was a two, uh, plus my uh, thing, which is two. So. Uh, the two guards pushing against you're pushing against, and it, you you make it last long enough that you you are able to. Um, my brain doesn't work when I GM games. What is it called when you <laughs> barricade? Race. You're able to barricade, barricade the door and they're slamming it, boom, boom, boom. Only for a couple seconds and then they just stop and the sound drops out. They just stop. They gave up. Did it, did it sound like, like they went away? Like did it peter off and we heard them walk away or did it sound like? Give me a focus check. Oh my gosh, I'm bad at focus. Can uh, I, can I, I do a focus we as well? Just Everybody can do focus. Just oh, count nice. our blessings and just hope for the best. I'm sure they're not coming back. Yeah, they realize the futility of tangling with Arnox Johnson. Bronson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Arnox Johnson Bronson. A seven. Can he oh, please be Johnson hyphen Bronson? <laughs> Inox Johnson Bronson. Bronson. Yeah, Inox Johnson Bronson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I what only are the got focus a two checks? total, so I am not. I am not a focus. No, sorry, a three total. Um, okay, and I three got total, a seven uh, that, total. Three total. Uh, that is a failure, and in this case, the stress of the moment and all of the barricading and everything like that, you are going to discard a card uh, oh, for that failure. Ooh. So no discard sense. a card from immediately. <laughs> wow. Discard right. a card Everyone? from your uh, stamina deck, and oh, all of us. Uh, no, just no. whoever oh, failed. Okay. And what did okay. you get on your focus? Um, a uh, sev seven. Seven. Did anybody else attempt it? Nope. No. No. Um, uh, a seven on your focus. You hear they both uh, are running away and running up the stairs. So you also think like they're going to alert somebody. Yeah. You m you maybe only have so much time. We need to keep moving. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Um, Paula, did you choose a card to discard, or did you just discard a random card? I did one randomly. Is that right? I think right? that that is I correct. I, I believe that's how you're I'm supposed to do it. I'm not happy with yes. what came off the top of my deck. Oh, no. <laughs> well, oh, you can no. catch a breath, but if it's the yeah, only it's, one it's just in, your, in your discard right now, you would have to lose it to catch a breath, so it wouldn't make much sense. Uh. So um, 
Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out the balance here of doing checks because there there is a risk associated with them. It is not that every mm. time you fail, you lose a stamina card, but it is a suggested thing. It's like if you fail, perhaps they lose a stamina card mm -hmm. to show the effort that was given into it. Um, you do want to balance rough. it though so that you get the sense of time passing and energy being used, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Let us move forward then. You guys can move forward and I'm gonna leave this light here for now just because it's easier to run the mm -hmm. game, uh, but, but it's also wait. awesome. So uh, the element is gonna stay strong with you and it is going to move with uh, and around Dazzle. Her name is Dazzle, it's perfect. <laughs> uh, as you move down this uh, construction zone, okay? You know, Dazzle, sometimes I look at you and I feel like I'm just blinded by your brilliance. <laughs> oh, uh, I hear that a lot actually. But um, it's nothing compared to your ingenuity, Spracket. You're always impressing me. That was some really quick thinking back there. Oh, wow, thanks. Well, you know, at the university, one of the things we worked on was quick thinking. And let me tell you, I'm pretty talented at it. Hector, any compliments for me? <laughs> <laughs> this is a thing we do, you should know. We're a loving family and we all give each other compliments. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, your you're, um, singing voice is unmatched. Uh, unmatched. And in he's looking way? around in... <laughs> it's Specific. Specific. <laughs> it, it's like flowers on the meadow at dawn. I am uh -oh. very, very scared. I knocks Johnson Bronson. The way that you carry those pickaxes <laughs> over to the entrance Ignore was it. just, it was, un, it was uncanny how strong you are. I always forget. It's lovely to be a part of this troop. Now, onward we go. What, what, what were you saying, Hector? Wait, Hector, though. I'll yes. put my hands on his shoulders. And he's like shaking. So, Can you do, fight? Do you, know, do you know where this leads? Do you know, do you know where we're going? <laughs> and he's looking back at the barricaded door. No. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> we don't know what lies ahead. No. No, it's it's no was your plan? Your plan was to just come down here and not know where to go next? Don't worry. What, what do we fear? <laughs> the dark. Nothing! <laughs> That's a good one, Spracket. As she like you, continues Arpeggio. walking, bumping into things because she walked ahead. <laughs> but Hector, Hector, <laughs> it was seriously, can can you fight? Uh, tell us. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I used to, um, I used to, I used to fight in, uh, in uh, His Majesty's royal guard. And uh, this would make no sense to you. Like he's he's this like scrawny, like weird looking dude. Uh, but he reaches down and he grabs this uh, this like metal uh, pole that just seems uh, like a um, it's like it's just like a spike, like a long spike. And he it can kind of be maybe like a like an iron spear or something like that and he mm -hmm. he picks it up and he's like yeah yeah i, I can use this uh, looking around uh, in fear and as you come up to him you see your light washes over kind of the only way to go which is down uh, a set of makeshift construction wooden stairs like basically planks that have just been put into the earth as it was dug lower uh into this into this area yeah, I know he's just an NPC, but if he really looks this scrawny, I'm going to give him a protective blessing. Aww. And I'm going to sanctify him as he's walking and hopefully kind of ease some of these tremors. Oh. The next time he takes damage, he'll take four less damage. Wow. Yeah. Holy crap. All right, well, keep me honest on that. Remind me of that. That's yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Uh, that's so. We are such a loving group. We you really love are. Each like other. For, you definitely must have been in prison for the wrong reasons. Right? Uh, Mr. Grimclaw, we are, you, you walk with a blessed group. You have nothing to fear. Oh. Hector. Feels this confidence uh, wash over him. I was really impressed with the way that you uh, expressed your emotions and let us all know how you're feeling. Great compliment. You have a compliment. Great compliment, Spracket. Thank you, Arpeggio. <laughs> Oh my I God. fell down. This I is fell the most down the upbeat steps. prison break uh, I've, I've ever seen. 
<laughs> Let's Dazzle. move forward. We're running oh. out of time. Okay. Uh, as the as you know, uh, pretty soon the, it stands to reason that a whole host of guards are going to be busting yeah. through that door behind you. It is time uh, to descend further into this uh, into this construction area. Let's say then, in short order, in the interest of keeping it moving, that you. Uh, descend through what appears to be the beginnings of a dig for the construction site. So it's kind of uh, large and uh, there's there's materials around and, uh, th- you know, construction things that were left behind. Uh, again, tools and other equipment. You guys can be creative here as you wish to make weapons out of things or whatever, grab things um, to, yeah. to utilize to defend yourselves. Uh, and we can just kind of, you know, retcon whatever you want there. But the point is, in one area... Uh, deep below, you see the opening uh, of a tunnel that curves off of the the wider space, and you immediately, uh, almost from a, a gut standpoint, um, uh, Paula, recognize a Vermling tunnel, like a Vermling Warren tunnel. And this construction site appears to have burst into like a, a looping curve of one of these warrens, and you know this is the way to go. However, and you lead your team through there. And again, this light is still emanating and is still strong about you. As you're moving through these warrens, uh, there are numerous intersections. T intersections, uh, four-way intersections, five-way intersections, and times where you don't know if you're going around, (laughs) exactly, if you're going around in circles. Go ahead and uh, how do you want to try to navigate these without having any idea what you're looking for or where you're going? All right, screw it. Now I'm praying. <laughs> now, right. now would be a great prayer. time to pray. Yes, uh, just, uh, d- let us explain. Pray. Explain, pray to me. Yeah, um, Dazzle drops to their knees. Uh, so I pray for something to happen. It is up to the GM if and how this prayer is answered. That's literally. And what you it turn says. over your background and, card. And I infuse light. And I discard a card. This is a Sunkeeper uh, skill. Oh, oh, it's a skill. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yes. you discard a card, and you are yep. uh, asking for. Let's what are you see. asking for? What are you praying for? Um. I know I ask a lot of you, oh, oh, giver of light, whoever you may be, for this rapscallion crew that I have found myself embroiled with. But I, you don't choose your family, you know? I just need (sighs) some sort of, your light has found us, but some sort of guiding light through these maze labyrinthine tunnels. Just show me the way. And it infuses more light as well. Infuses more light as well. Amazing. Um, okay. So you believe, uh, you, you say your prayer and then you begin walking. You don't know if it's going to work or not. Uh, I want a little but, like blinky firefly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like a little wisp. Yeah. <laughs> this way. Down a tunnel. <laughs> uh, no, no, no such thing happens. You don't see any direct answer to your prayer. And everyone is going to need to... Is there anyone else doing anything hmm. in particular? Or are you relying solely on uh, this prayer? Could I use, in addition to this prayer, use my... Well, you know, at the university, we studied ancient vermilion ways. And of course, I've studied this artifact in the kinds of places where maybe it would have been kept. And so I bet with this knowledge... I'll see the signs that would lead us to the place where it is. And can I use my knowledge using my formal education background card uh, to look for (laughs) signs of where I know something, a thing of power might be kept in a place like this? Sure. Yeah. So give me a knowledge check. I love it when you say something kind of shenanigansy like that and your GM just says, sure. Um, (laughs) Sure. Okay. So... (laughs) I this promised be- myself I would do it, Paula. <laughs> Plus knowledge divided by two rounded up if I mention my education. So I'll do a knowledge. <laughs> I'll put my card. You know, and I'll back at the university. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. So I'm adding a two to whatever I pull. 
I say, give me the strength to not take it personally that my <laughs> prayers are not enough for Spracket. I feel filled by the light of your god, and <laughs> I have a total of 12 oh, for this check. Oh, crap. Thank you, formal education. Thank you, Harvard. <laughs> You're so smart. <laughs> okay. You, Gloom Harvard. <laughs> right. You begin to see patterns in in the madness, and you... Yes. Uh, My people, I know them well. For a few hours, you are leading the group through these tunnels, and Hector is slowly getting more and more paranoid, and in general, it feels like maybe you're lost, but you don't feel that way. You feel like you... Oh. Each decision you're making feels like it's based on the knowledge that you know of how these warrens are set up, how they're designed specifically to confuse uh, intruders, but how you can see a pattern that will lead you to what would you would consider to be the most central part of this place where something of value would be safely hidden. Spracket right. basically like scurries ahead, kind of looks and goes, no. And then scurries and is like, ah, <laughs> this way. And then, and then scurries and goes, I need that light. Do, 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 do. You know, like if I were a cat, Got my it. tail would be like up in the air. You know mm. what I mean? Love Those it. of you who have cats know what I'm talking about. <laughs> cat people are loving it. Yep. And eventually, Spracket, you lead the way and emerge into what you must be looking for. You emerge into this larger room that seems to be a, perhaps a former uh, mausoleum of some kind. It is, uh, because the first thing that you notice as the light washes in here is coffins. The coffins are smaller than human size. They're like smaller Mm. coffins, the kind of coffins that uh, would would, uh, hold vermling. And they are, uh, they look, they appear almost as if they have spilled from the walls or something. They Hmm. are broken and open and in a mass of piles of tangles of on, on each other and, and generally look to be a disaster. You see... A hor- you see a horrifying scene. You see what looks like bones everywhere that have like tumbled out of these coffins and are lying all over the ground and they seem to be small bones, like the bones of Vermling, small skulls, the skulls of Vermling, and they are all just sort of like poured out onto the ground central in this uh, area is uh, a small mound that rises up to almost like an altar type uh, uh, situation. And in front of that, you see what looks like a, a large piece of metal lying on the ground that looks to be maybe the size of a full vermling. It's a bit, you know, kind of about that oh. size, but it's a it's a chunk of metal, uh, rectangular in nature, but it's dark and a little bit far away, kind of hard for you to see. But huh. the light that is emanating out from Dazzle is is glinting off of this, and even though dirt and age seems to have um, had its way with this metal, there is still some reflection of the light coming off of it that lets you know it is decidedly metal and potentially a copper or a brass type uh, metal. Finally found my jewelry. (laughs) There it is. There it is. What do you do? Gosh, Spracket, are you all right? Wow, ancient examples of my ancestors. (laughs) This is fascinating. I'll skirt, I'll pick up one of the skulls and look at it. You scurry, pick up one of the skulls and look at it, and yeah. all of a sudden, the oh. light starts to dim. Oh, oh no. Sorry, everyone. No. You start to get this foreboding feeling, this feeling of loss and anguish and, oh. and 
betrayal and it seeps through the the elemental nature of darkness now matches the strength of the light and while it's not pure darkness there is an infused element of dark that descends upon all of you and amongst the rubble of these bones these purplish spirits oh, no. rise up from the bones and as you're holding out this skull you see the face the ethereal face of a vermling passes right through it and onto the skull <gasps> and just <laughs> and we are going into initiative oh, oh, okay. oh my as we God. head okay. into combat full on combat oh, so man. okay oh, you yeah. see Scary. four different spirits rise up from these bones four. Okay. and uh, they definitely uh, seem hostile and <laughs> you uh, we now go into round one which is uh, which is going to be basically you're going to choose two cards and you're going to choose which one of those two you want to be your initiative score and then once everybody has chosen we will rattle it off and we will find out what everybody's uh, initiative is uh, you, I choose mine as well can you remind me too like when you're choosing the two cards do you have to then play the two cards like how Top and bottom. It's always one. You have is to top play the top of one, of one of card and the bottom of another card. Thank you. Or the Either. basic action. Yep. Or, or, or you cannot use the ability on that card and just use the basic action. A basic move, move. is four hexes. Uh, it, would, it used to be two. Now it's four. And a basic attack is two attack. A basic melee swing for two damage. Um, let me low know. Number is good. Yeah, so these spirits are all, uh, one of them is in melee range already with, uh, with Spracket, and the rest of you are all within a quick move of all four of them, and they are all within a quick move of you. This is all very close combat situation. Um, <laughs> oh, baby. Okay. Uh, uh, is the light strong right now? <laughs> uh... Is the light strong? Yes, it is. It is. Light and dark are both strong in here right now as the okay. forces of darkness uh, go up against you. Uh, let's. Ooh, all right. Uh, did okay. everybody choose? I yes. have chosen. Yes. Okay, so let's do initiative numbers first. Inox. 15. 15. Uh, Arpeggio. Oh, uh, sorry. That's my name. <laughs> yeah. 20, 21. 21. Uh, Spracket. Uh, 16. 16 and Dazzle. Also 16. Hmm. Also 16. But, but we work as a team, and I'm sure that you know that m a lot of my technique is to buff my friends and might benefit going before you. Well, I might be doing something also. similar, so oh, no. it's okay. I actually don't freaking know the rules for tying exactly. Yeah, I don't know either. I've, I actually, wait. There's so many numbers, it doesn't seem that common. I did I read know. it though. I know, I, <laughs> no, they it's put it in here. Oh, oh my gosh, I got it. Uh, if there is a tie between multiple characters, compare the initiative score uh, of those characters' other ability card. Oh. So what's your second oh. initiative ah. card? Oh. 74. 65. Whoa. 65. Okay, so that means uh, Paula, or I'm sorry, Josephine, you will be going first, followed by okay. Paula. Uh, and then you, uh, in, I, I don't know if you know the initiative uh, in, in, um, in Gloomhaven the way that you know it in the board game because you already you know all the enemies initiative you know what i'm gonna err on the side of that just to tell you uh so right now you're going you're all going before they're going okay uh, sweet awesome. and we start with inox bronson who is the fastest to jump as these spirits leap up okay what do you do inox bronson i will sorry go ahead is there a group of them within two spaces of me yeah Hell yeah! Okay. All right, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna do shield bash. I'm gonna move two and get an extra shield. Okay. Move up to them. And then I'm gonna do sweeping blow. Oh, sweeping blow! Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. So do I draw for one of each of them, or one for the whole attack? Uh, you draw eat for one of each of them. So do, let's do this. Will be uh, 
This will be uh, the okay. Just do the first one. Pull pull a, okay. a mod modifier. All right, plus one, and I get an additional plus one. <laughs> um, do I have athletics for this, or is it just no, no, no? It's yeah. it's just the damage. So you have okay. your ability does two damage, and you're yep. adding plus one from your modifier. Where does the other plus one come from? Uh, from the the car plus one damage on each undamaged target. Ooh. Oh, awesome! Wow, uh, nice. Okay, amazing. So you whap, you slam this thing, and it it vanishes and disappears. Like you just completely oh, knock nice. it out of existence. Oh. But you did feel some level of resistance there. But your strength was able to power through. Mm. Uh, what 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 about the next one? Pull a modifier. Okay, next on that. one plus zero. Uh, so that's three three total. A total of three, and that does not defeat it. So you you do damage it, and uh, but it is still there. Okay, so we have three that are standing, and it is uh, Josephine's turn. It's Dazzle's turn. Okay, Dazzle comes through with a holy strike. I'm going to attack. I'm going to consume some of this light element. Ooh, ooh. And All right. Goes straight into I don't know. Assume some sort of jagged sword they picked up, and. I will strike at one of these ghosty vermlings. Is that what we're dealing with? Well, they they are not in melee with you yet. So, okay. are you do you can, do you have oh. the ability to move to it? Oh, I didn't think about that. They are, the only one they're in melee with is uh, Spracket. Ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, then. Was that a bottom? No, it was a top. You wanted to do something juicy with the other bottom. I know I it. I know I it. did. Gloomhaven is painful. It's I painful. I did. Damn. Okay. Okay. If it, well, if it makes you then... feel better, I forgot lower initiative was better, so I <laughs> picked weirdly anyway. <laughs> How about... Mm, mm. You know what? I'm going to switch it up. We're going to switch it up. How about I do five damage to a target that is... Like three hexes away. That is yeah. further away. That's wow. a bottom action. That's a bottom action? <sighs> yeah. It's a bottom wow. action. It gets lost. Oh, to deal three okay. damage to another one? It, do- it deals five damage. Deals five, oh, deals five awesome. damage. All right, so you can target yeah. you can target the one someone that, further away. Uh, the one that um Inox hit. You can target the one that's in melee with Spracket or the one that's not in melee with either of them. Uh, let's do the one in melee. Oh, not in melee with either of them. Yeah. Okay, and that one. That way they don't have to worry about moving. You hit it with this. What is it? What's the card? This is the holy strike. It's just the bottom the holy half of the stri- holy strike. Oh, the strike, bottom. So and it's a lost this, card. Okay. This one prob- This one creates light, but I think we're already maxed out on light in here anyway. Uh, but, it's all good. Uh, and you just, oh, shot. Yeah. this holy strike disperses the spirit of this vermling, and it is gone, Zoni. Nice. nice. Lost. Uh, okay, that, so that's the bottom. So then the top of the other action will be just to shield myself for one. One shield. Is that for the just for this I round? I think it's just for the round, which is not what I had initially intended, but here we go. Uh, okay. It is now arpeggio. I'm sorry, Spracket's turn. Uh, hey, are people standing what we would call adjacent to me? Like, or did I run no, you away ran from... Away, you ran away from them. Um, oh, boy. Well, that's not how I was picturing it, and I should have chosen differently. <laughs> we're so all here's just, a lot we're, all like, we're gonna do. I know. The, the, the game is meant to be played on a map, but whatever. We're having fun. That's okay. Yeah. It's completely fine. This, honestly, my, would probably have happened on the map anyway. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. I am going to summon a decoy out of my, uh, out of a pocket. I pull out what looks like just a little balled up piece of uh, like foil and I, and it, and it lands on the ground and it kind of sprouts into a little like, that will draw everyone to it. It'll be a nice little distraction. Um, it can move and it's got, it cannot damage or target, but it can move and it's got some health. And then once that's out, uh, that will be burned at the end of this. Uh, yeah, remind me that that's out because that's going to draw the attacks of these things. Yeah. Uh, and then I will. That's a top action. So for my bottom, um, since no one's adjacent to me at the moment, I'll just hold on to that and I will 
uh, just move to, I'll go, ha, and I'll run back to my friends. Were, were, so were you using a basic move? Yeah, I'm using a basic move, yeah. Okay, all right, so uh, those cards discarded. Arpeggio, yeah. your turn. Okay, uh, so for the bottom on my first one, I, well, now you're back, but I still want to do this. I <laughs> am granting Spracket uh, four movement. So you get that now for your next turn. Oh, wow. Um, and the cool thing about the Soothsinger is like, I have these song cards that I can play. They're, they have these sort of, um, these notes on them, but I have to like collect the notes by using other cards before I can do those like big things. Oh, so there's one called like, cool. power ballad, but I have to keep track of the notes. So that's why I'm also strategically doing this that's so I can awesome. gather my needed notes. So that's the first thing. And you know, she sings, like these are her like pieces of her songs and she sings to Spracket. <laughs> Tears are a waste, they've no place here. The void is vast, devout of cheer. An echoing silence, a stifling smother. It takes and takes like no other. And it's like the misery of Aww. these poor vermlings. Like yep. she's using it. Wow. She's using it like an actor. I love it. <laughs> so then the top for the next one is Use all it. attacks all attacks targeting me this round. Oh, but the round is over. Whatever. This round gained di well, disadvantage. they still have to attack. They have to go. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so they... all attacks targeting me this round have disadvantage. Nice. That's awesome. Okay, so fantastic. Uh, all right. And then it is their turn. Uh, and there are two. And I don't one get that movement next... until next turn. Um, It doesn't say. It just says grant one ally within the distance the four movement. So I'm giving it to you now. So I assume you would have it yeah, now. Yeah, you did. Just do uh, okay. it, right? I guess, yeah. So the one, so. the one right next. Well, I'm sorry. What are you talking to me? <laughs> the, uh, Arpeggio granted Spracket some movement. I get to do that now, right? I, yes. Or does that wait until my next turn? Uh, uh, with, typically, if you grant a character movement, it's instantaneous. It's right then. Oh, they, they oh, 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 I see. Okay. Awesome. Well, you don't have to. Sorry, I don't know. No, <laughs> I will. I will. But, uh, I looked at my friends and I went. You're right. We shouldn't all bunch up. And I will <laughs> actually run. I have four movement, so I'm gonna run around if I can into like the back of where, kind of try and get behind where these ghosty ghosts are. Then, if I can. So okay. Do it. Yeah. So you run okay. around behind. No, I mean, let's picture this correctly. You walked up. There were the the rubble and the and the bones and stuff like that then there's that chunk of metal and in front of the altar that's that's what's behind them so if you run past to get around behind them you are closer to the altar are you picturing this the same way i am yes yes okay so the yeah the room kind of ends it's like a, it's like a crescent shaped room where you guys came in the one side and it there's a wall in the back of the altar so it's just wham you're going deeper into the room and it is <laughs> I don't think Paula saw that, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, it is the Vermling's turn. The one reaches out to Inox Bronson and just, and it has this like sort of pathetic cry and you feel your very life force uh, being attacked. Scared. No. Uh-oh. That is a here. three damage. And you have, I know you have shield, right? Yeah, I have it's one not penetrate shield. That. Okay. All right, so you take two, two. damage and I heal one life oh. as he starts leeching <gasps> the life force from you. Oh no. You. And then no, the one no, that no. the one that was previously in combat with uh, with Spracket turns to Spracket <gasps> and does the same from range. <gasps> starts to leech. He said, "Hey, look at my distraction." Yeah, leech. Get distracted. Oh, oh, right, 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 right. I'm sorry. You're right. It, it actually, it, it'll attack the distraction. Uh, all right, so it attacks the distraction for two uh, damage. All right. I'll and, just mark that down. And heals itself. And... Oof. Oh, no. That is when two more ghosts oh, don't rise. Don't say that. Don't say oh, that no. is when both back by Spracket. 
And these ghosts look a little different. They're a little <laughs> bit, a little bit bigger. They're chalky still, boys. Still vermlings, but they look a, like adorned with some sort of like uh, jewelry, heavy jewelry around their necks. More jewelry! <laughs> Stop <laughs> it! Keep seeing his jewelry everywhere. And then, <laughs> and then rising up from between them. Spracket, your blood runs cold as you hear <laughs> this bizarre sound as this huge chunk of metal starts to rise into the air to uh, a height no. of maybe seven feet and you see coming out of the metal is our bones, the bones of a humanoid creature that is way oh, no. larger than a vermling and oh. is strapped in some sort of brass armor. And then from behind the brass armor, this this something clicks and this this whirring starts sounding and this oh, fiery no. orange glow comes from some sort of like power housing in the back of this armor and it just like and a skull comes through a human skull comes through the top of the armor and these uh, hands come out to the side and it is basically a skeleton with like a mech suit on essentially <laughs> is what rises up in front of you Incredible. next okay. round everybody pick your next two okay, okay so what abilities. we had gets discarded right what we did use what you did use gets discarded, and now you've got to choose two more. Uh, and you know, thinking about kind of what that what that initiative is going to be. Oh, Freaking initiative! Okay. Whatever. I don't even <laughs> care. All right. <laughs> Whatever. I, have an I don't idea. even oh, care. Oh wait, at the end of at the end of that anymore. round, though, can I take a breath? Uh, yes. I'll just I'll discard one of or I'll lose one of these at random and get my discard pile back. Oof. Oh well, yeah, you, you one, discard some things Yeah, yeah, you lose yeah, one. Yeah. I don't know if it's at random. I was trying to find that because it is in it, the in the board game. A, yeah, it is at random and then you can pay one hit point if you want to That's right. choose, choose, choose a different one. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Uh, okay, so you can lose one and get your discard pile back and now choose your next round. Uh, let's go with Inox, have you chosen? Yes. All right, what's your initiative? 61. 61, okay. Uh, Paula, have you chosen? Yes. What My is initiative your initiative? is 19. 19, what about Arpeggio? Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be a, a fifth, uh, 85. 85, okay. <laughs> and... It sounds so silly to say that. I'm like, 85 is my initiative? It's such a high number. Uh, and what about Dazzle? Mm, 55. 55. Uh, okay. Uh, Spracket, you are acting first in this round. Okay. Here's what I'm doing. In <laughs> front of me, I got some range stuff. I pull out a toxic bolt. Uh, and I attach a little, like a, I'm, I'm, for flavor, I'm combining two sort of things here, but I, I pull out my toxic bolt and, uh, whichever one is closest to me, I, and I like, I take out like another little, like, what's like a balled up piece, uh, looks like a balled up piece of foil on my pocket and I throw it at it. Um... And if it hits... Well, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Is it, it, it a toxic arrow or is it, it a piece of aluminum foil? Well, look, I don't have a bolt. <laughs> so I'm just feeling like, what kind of trash would I have in my pocket? So it's a little piece of aluminum foil that I've poisoned that it when I when I throw it... Look, look, just go with me on this, okay? Can you go with me? Joe, I'm asking yeah, you to go with me. I didn't know if they were two different things you were doing. So it's no, 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 a no, ranged attack. I changed my attack. mind halfway through. Got it's it. called ranged toxic attack. bolt, but it's a ranged attack. I throw a thing, it's poison... Pfft, it hits it. If it hits it, it's going to be poison, and it'll create some earth element. So... Okay. Um, hey, here's a great time. I'm going to use my imposter background. Instead of drawing a modifier card, use a single card from your discard pile because I'm impostering this toxic bolt into some aluminum foil. That's a good... Can I do that? Good use of that. Uh, uh, I'm just I don't think use... so, but sure. Yeah, I don't think it, you know, I can't do it. I don't it? think you're supposed to use background ca cards in oh, combat, in combat? Right? Great. I will just pull a regular card. I could then. be wrong, though. I think it's murky on if you can or not. It's murky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they're combat specific, 
Was and that a combat specific card? What did it say? It just says imposter. Instead of drawing imposter a syndrome. modifier card, use a single card from your discard pile. I would say then yes. Modifier card, that seems combat specific. Uh, but you're using modifiers all the time for non-combat checks. I, I'm, I'm just gonna trying say to be no, you can't side. use it. I'm just trying to be <laughs> I, I, think, I think that that's meant well, to be non-combat. Uh, this was a minus one, so I'll do one damage. And I don't miss, so at least, so that's good. I do one damage instead of two. And uh, they are poisoned, which means all attackers gain a plus one damage. It prevents healing. So take that. Okay, so you see that that... <laughs> You, you hit it and you get the sense it did nothing to it in terms of damage. It did not get through. It has some sort of shield, uh, but it is poisoned. Uh, and that this is well, one of that. the this is one of the newer spirits um, that and has risen up. The jeweled spirits, the priests, I will just call them. Look, don't ask. It sounds like magic, but I promise it's technology. So as my second bottom action, what happens to this uh, creature? Is the card is called Net Shooter, but I'm not using. I'm saying that my little foil bing, down over the spectral foot and is holding it in place. So this is immobilized. Uh, it cannot move until oh. its next turn. It's immobilized, oh. and um, then I get to move. Th- I get to move three, and so I'm going to use that movement to jump on top of the altar. Uh, all right, you jump on top of the altar, you will be behind the, like, uh, bone mech. You understand so what I'm just, saying? just, like, turn around and whack me? It, 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 it might, uh, if that's what it's yeah, doing yeah, this round. Yeah, I'm jumping up on the altar. <laughs> okay, you and, jump uh, up on the altar and you are flanking, yeah. you are behind this bone mech compared to everybody else. That's right. And it is... This, the uh, the Vermling's turn, and uh, the one that the ones that you hit, or the uh, yeah the ones that you hit are going to uh, they're going to screech, and the screech is so painful, the misery hits so to your core, Arpeggio, that it's breaking your heart. Whatever happened to them is is making you uh, confused about how to even move on. Uh, you are all going to take a curse into your deck. Uh, I'm us? sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not all of you. I'm oh. going to roll for one. Only Inox does not take one uh, mm. into your deck. So you will all get a curse in your deck, and we have a method that we're going to do for this. Um, and then uh, you know, doing it remotely. And then the other one, it does the same exact thing. Only this time, it uh, this time it does not include. Um, uh, sorry, Josephine. Dazzle. Dazzle. So the Yay. other two of you have two curses in oh. your deck. <laughs> oh, so, and so uh, uh, curses is just having an additional fumble in your modifier yeah. deck. Um, and they create frost. So it starts to get Ooh. icy cold throughout the room as well. Uh, also, I should say uh, that the... All Whatchamacallit, the, the, uh, the light element is waning. The dark element is staying strong. Oh, it stayed strong? Did you strong? get my it toxic strong, bolt brought up Even though light element. is waning. Hmm. Okay. Some earth element was created by my toxic bolt as well, if you, just to make Ooh. sure that's... Okay, and now we've got a small uh, guy, and the small guy is actually hitting the... Um, your little... Oh, my gosh. Foil guy, uh, yeah, decoy. foil guy, your decoy, and I and I do zero damage. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, <laughs> zero <laughs> Dimaggio, and the one next to Inox Bronson swings at him. Oh, and that does four damage. Oh no, that's not that, good at all. That's kind of a big hit. That was a good pull, uh, and it is Josephine's turn. This. Ooh. The 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 uh, vermlings have all gone. This uh, um, bone Inox mech has just not took acted. Four? What's that? Inox just took four. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Inox Bronson okay. Johnson Bronson okay. just took four. Okay. Okay. So I move two. I'm doing the bottom action of of a uh, hammer blow. I move two and I bless myself. Okay. Um, what does that mean? So I, I literally get a blessed card. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, nice. In my deck. 
Um, but I want to move towards uh, so that I'm within range of Inox so that I can then That's shower fine. him with a soothing light oh, as nice. I heal him for three. Oh, wow. and, holy crap. That's awesome. I'm also going to consume the last of the light. Okay, that was waning and now it's gone. Now it's inert. And Inox can also take one level one card from his discard and put it back in his hand. Oh, wow. Sweet. Wow. Holy wow. Shit. That's cool. pretty good. Thank you. That's pretty good. Note to self, bring a Sunkeeper to <laughs> yeah. every combat. Uh, and is that me. your turn? Nice yeah. turn. All right. It's And you are up, Inox. You have this uh, one spirit next to you, two a little bit of a distance away that seem a little bigger, and then Bone Mech. Okay. Holy shit. All right. So, so, so thanks a lot, Sunshine. And <laughs> you got it, muscle. <laughs> First yeah. thing I'm gonna do for my bottom half, uh, if I want to, I want to move four spaces through as many enemies as possible. Uh, um, okay, yeah. you can move through all four. Actually, okay, oh. yeah, I want to get. I'd like to end up adjacent to the the big the bone mech. Uh, okay, well, okay, yeah. Let's just say you can do it. I think that you might be one short, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Let's say you can do it. It's real okay. tight quarters here. Okay, um, so I'm gonna do three damage plus to each of the enemies that I that I move through. So, wow. doom, 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 doom. Uh, first one, five damage. First one, and that's the one that was right next to you. It is destroyed. Yep. Awesome. Uh, <gasps> second yes. one, fumble. Ooh. All right, shuffle. Uh, oh, that's third. a shame because that was the poisoned one. Oh shoot. Uh -huh. Uh, mm -hmm. third one is, uh, four damage. Four right. damage, okay. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, third one is the, uh, the big guy. You said Ooh. four, you said four damage? Yeah. Uh, not all that gets through, but you do make contact with some of these bones. Okay. <laughs> and then when I reach the bone mech, I am going to perform an overwhelming assault. Oh! <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes. Just lifts both his hands up over his head and brings them down on the skull. Wow. Seven damage. Wow. Oh my yes. God. All right. So you see this thing like chugging behind it. The the armor seems to be chugging with some sort of power source. Now that you're close up to it, you can smell sort of the the um, the existence of of flame, of fire. Actually, uh, Spracket, you're behind it. You see this mechanism. It is fascinating to you. This looks like some incredible piece of Vermling technology, maybe, or or not Vermling. I mean, it's it's much too large for a Vermling to wear, so it's very strange. Um, and, uh, but perhaps it could be resized. Uh, that, I'm sorry, seven damage. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just thrown for a loop by this. Uh, not <laughs> all of that gets through you jerk uh, <laughs> but it does hurt it pretty good awesome and I did burn both those cards those, those are both. All right, so those are okay. two burns uh, two yeah. lost cards okay good to know and it is oh it's bone mix turn oh, oh no, no. is bone mix turn uh, okay sorry just making sure that I have this correct I do uh, this is going to be vicious. It just lifts up an arm, smash down on Inox Bronson for four points of damage. Oh. And then it turns and the same thing wham, oh on uh, oh, on uh, Spracket another four points oh, of damage. Oh man. Bam. Oh. oh it hurts. It Making hurts. sure I did that right. I did, yes. So that is that was its turn. It did not move, but it smashed both of you, and it's still standing there in front of the altar. And it is Arpeggio's turn. Okay. Question: uh, oh, I have oh, my oh, two oh. two cards. Can I also do a skill action during my action? Can I tack it on, or is Let's it like? Let's see. A Talk to me. What's the skill? Well, first, let me do my attack. So, I have the singing arrow. And I think she just like screams a note, almost like um, Mary Clayton in Gimme Shelter. Like it's like war children, like that part, but it's like, Aah! and she, <laughs> she's in so much pain, this misery. Uh, and that's gonna be, okay. Oh, 
Okay, plus two, so that's four total. And to, to, I, I'm sorry, to who? I'm gonna do it to the bone man. Or there's still one of the bigger vermling ghosts, right? Uh, there's both. Both are still. Oh, one's both. poison. That would be a good one to hit tactically because yeah. it takes an extra damage. I'll do the I'll do the poison one. And you did how much damage? Four damage, and then you also have to put a curse card in their modifier yeah. deck. Yeah. Nice. Bet you're pissed about that. Wait, wait, wait. wait. H- hold on a second. Did you did you pull from your modifier deck? Yeah. Oh, so you already drew, and that was your total damage was four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I had to, to to roll for your curse uh, just oh, because we're modi- doing it remote. I had to oh, see if you pulled your curse, but you did it. not, and you did four uh, damage, and you Use? did not destroy it, but oh, okay. you got very close. It has one hit point left. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, the second oh. one. Oh wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh no, no. I am right. I am right. One hit point left. <laughs> oh come on. What a roll. I really coaster. rattled rattled the I bones. I keep thinking that the first line of this chart for the bestiary is level one creature, because that's what you're supposed to be fighting, level one creature. But it's actually level zero. They have level zeros in here, but Ooh. I'm doing level one. Uh, so it is the <laughs> second line of, of HP, hard. which means it has one hit point left. Go. Uh, okay, so then the bottom half of my other card for initiative. So this is the one that I have to keep track of. On my allies' next five attacks, I move this marker on it uh, that they get a bonus to it. So I'm putting the marker on it for the first time. So they're... There's no bonus on the first one. It's a zero, so you use your own modifier. But then this is for all you guys, too. <gasps> so for the next one, Oh, my one, gosh, though, amazing. Yeah, you'll get a plus one, then a plus two, then okay, a plus two. It's okay, pretty okay. dope. That's so, so cool. Nice. That is awesome. Uh, amazing. Is that the end of your turn? I was going to ask, for the skill, I also wanted to. I have to discard a card for it, but I wanted to remove all the curses from Paula's deck, from Spracket's deck. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to let you do it because it's cool. I don't know if yes. it's by the rules, but discard a card and Paula, yes. yeah, you have no curses in your deck. Awesome. Nice. I discard nice. randomly, Thank right? You. Yeah, so shuffle your current hand shuffle. and pick one out, throw it in your discard pile, and let's move to the next round. Wait, uh, elements sh- go down, right? Just a reminder. Uh, yes, uh, dark does not. Okay. So, so unless you spend dark, I'll give you a little uh, insight yeah. into this encounter. Unless you spend dark, it reinfuses every round at full strength because this is a very horrible place. Uh, I think Paula infused earth with her with her bullet last round, so that'll go down. So that'll go away too. That's yeah. it waning. What's well, it waning? Yeah. And I infused frost. Frost is it waning? So there's frost out there, earth out there, and dark out there for anybody that has things that can spend those. Uh, okay, let's. Dance! Got it. Uh, all right. How I, I, I am ready. Who, who else is yeah. ready? How yeah. bunched up would you say our enemies are right now? They are, uh, uh, well, the two priest uh, spirits are bunched up with the living bones. Uh, not the living bones, the uh, bone mech, and mm-hmm. you and Inox. A okay. little bit away from you is another spirit that's that's targeting your um, your Great. decoy, and Great. then uh, further out back are uh, Dazzle and Arpeggio. Awesome. Then my plan. Then I'm ready. I got a plan. I think I think I'm a little bit closer to Inox just because I've been healing him or I healed him. I'm within. Okay, so you're in melee. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. all right. So then you, they're all in melee. melee. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, oh yeah, it's, I assumed your heel was ranged. It is ranged. It's right, just, so you're it's a little like, bit away from him. It's a few spaces. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Um, I have thirty-six. Okay, thirty-six for Dazzle. Who's next? I have well, twenty. Just tell me your number. Twenty. Twenty. Mm-hmm. Oh, you guys are cooking with gas now. Who's next? I have uh, fourteen. What <laughs> on earth? Ah, this is bad for me. Inox. Uh, Twenty-three. 23. Oh, oh my, my gosh, you're goodness. all going before me? Okay. Arpeggio. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> Arpeggio then just starts like like an arpeggio, starts singing this like scale of music, and I'm doing this action. It's cool. So three targets. I'm going to target the two big vermlings and the bone mech, and they all get muddle. 
Oh, oh muddle. So muddle, they get disadvantage yes. on all attacks. Nice. And it removes God at the damn end. It, that's huge. <laughs> end of the next turn. So she's just singing. It's called dissonant rhythm. She's just like it's oh. like mm-hmm. oh, 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 like <laughs> so annoying. Imagine it's being trapped so in a car with arpeggio for a five hour drive. <laughs> oh my God. Then. <laughs> The next one I'm doing is Bewilder Me, Bewildering Instrumental, which is like one of my songs I create. At the end of each of my turns, the enemy with the highest current hit point value suffers one damage and gains muddle. So they gain muddle, it's fine. But I just want them to take that like little tick of damage. So yeah. who has the highest, now it's the end of my turn, who has the highest hit point value? What? So oh, somebody t- enemies. The enemies. The enemies. Yeah, who has the highest hit point value? They'll take one damage at the end of my turn. So now that yeah. my turn's ending, does that take... b- does that bypass a shield? Mm, I, I, I don't. Th- I, I don't see why it would. What? What is it? Oh, it's just from the song. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'll give it to you because it is kind <laughs> of like a almost mental damage. So I'll say yeah. it bypasses the shield. It All happens right. for like four rounds. I keep the card out. Holy shit! Yes. Wow, that's yeah, good. I have so many cards out right now. <laughs> yeah, but that also means your stamina deck is getting low. Like, oh you know. yeah, oh yeah, it's not looking good. <laughs> it's oh, not no. looking good. All right, Spracket. All right, um, here's what I'm doing. I am uh, pulling out an ink bomb out of my pocket and I'm throwing it at a little cluster of the three enemies who are right there: the mech and the two spirit priests. Okay. Uh, this will do four damage and. Muddle them. They're already muddled, but uh, it'll at least do. Four wait, wait, I'm sorry. Hold damage. on a second. If I get a good success. Uh, hold on a second. So it does four damage to three <laughs> different creatures. It's a burn card. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you will take disadvantage on every one of these pulls uh, if wow. it is a ranged attack. Is it a ranged attack? Yeah. Am I right next to them? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, then I do this first. First, I do my bottom of my stun shot. I jump back one, I jump back down off the altar. So okay. I've moved back a space. Uh, and as I do it, I say, you suck, which gives a curse <laughs> card to the mech okay. uh, at a range of one. And then I throw my ink bomb, because now I'm at range. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, four damage to each. Go ahead. So pull your modifier for the first uh, poisoned. Wow. Oh, and a fumble on the poisoned one. Okay. okay. When, do, one. when do I shuffle at the end of this check? Yeah, at the end of this. Minus one, so that's three. Oh. Three damage. Uh, it uh, does, it does a little bit. Hey, you did a little damage. And then a plus zero, so four. So four to the, uh, to the bone mech. Still now up, they bone are mech still kicking. Muddled, muddled, so that doesn't give me any boost. Okay. Uh, and your curses had been removed from your deck, which is phenomenal. Uh, Inox. Thank you. Okay. Did I pulled fun. real. I, I, you guys had great initiative this round. I could have done really cool stuff, but you're getting the jump on them so hard. I, I don't even know if I'm going to ah. get a turn. All right. Let's right, go, Inox. Them. What do you got? Inox is going to pull a dagger that he smuggled into the prison. It's a hollowed out <laughs> part of his horn. Yes. And he pulls yes. it out. Oh, amazing. He's going to use imposing presence uh, against the bone mech. Times oh, two. Oh, no. Yes. Yes. What so, a time to pull a crit. So oh. that's six damage and two piercing. Oh, oh he's no! <gasps> he's yes, dead. come on, be dead. He's gotta be. He is not dead, but that okay. all oh goes gosh. through. Okay, and then I'm gonna use the bottom half of my spare dagger card to attack for, to attempt attack for two more damage and another pierce. Okay. Two more damage and one more pierce. Two more damage and one more pierce. This thing is looking rough. Uh, holy crap. <laughs> nice turn, Inox. <laughs> it is. Time for Dazzle. Dazzle us. Yeah, I, I I might switch my, which you can do, which you can do. I'm wondering mm-hmm. if I'm going to switch my top and bottom suddenly. Oh. You switch guys did so strategy. much cool so stuff. Both, you both of the uh, Vermling priests are still up. So is the other one. The the so uh, the regular cool stuff. one. Yeah, they are still up. And so they're all muddled, which means they'll have disadvantage on their attacks. Correct. Yeah. But, hmm. Hmm. 
Um, you know what? No, it's okay. I think we're doing well. I'm gonna Dazzling Charge, which you think sounds like an attack, but I like to heal my friends with my charges. Yeah. And so it's like sparkle, glitter, as light <laughs> is infused once more. You, you <laughs> oh, create light? It. Yeah, I create light and I heal Inox for Yay. another three. Nice. I love it. Yeah, there um, you go. Here we and, go. Uh, there we go. Here and we then go. I've got an, the bottom is a move three, which I'm just gonna assume I'm just gonna strategically place myself within range of my allies, but not within melee of. Not within enemies. melee of any of the spirits. Okay. And I consume light. Okay. And I ward Inox. The next oh. source of damage you will have rounded down. Oh, nice. Awesome. That's so cool. And that's me. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, wow. Phenomenal. Great. Uh, and you didn't pull any modifiers for that, right? That was all you didn't need to. Am I supposed to for healing? It's just for attacking, right? Yeah. Yeah, just for... Yeah, if it's heal, it, it would just give you a number. Okay. Uh, okay. These terrible... Uh, these... these uh, okay. So <laughs> the poisoned uh, priest looks across at my good friend, Arpeggio. <laughs> yeah, and it just... <laughs> And it scream it screams this misery, but then you look into its eyes. It connects with you. And oh, it no. it ha- it attempts to harm you. Oh. oh! Oh, I pulled a plus two and a plus one. Disadvantage Whoa. though, you take that plus one mo I know, I know. So you still <laughs> you still are going to take five points of damage. Oh. And then Whoa. that's I'm your first that's damage, right? I only have six hit points. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, man. and then I am going to consume frost to stun no. you. Oh, oh my gosh. no! So uh, it's called icy glare. So it looks at you and it it tortures you through just with its eyes, and you take that damage, five damage, and you are. Stunned. I just freeze and the singing ceases. Oh. Oh no. Uh, then uh, it the next one does the same thing to Dazzle, <gasps> and uh, it does three points of damage, and there is no more frost to spend, so I can't stun you. But you take three points of damage, and then the other one is going to continue attacking the uh, the decoy. And it actually does two points of damage to the okay. decoy. Still right. up? Decoy still up? Still up. Decoy's got lots of hit points. Decoy For had real. more hit points than me. For- <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so that was them. And then it's uh, big guy's turn. Big guy uh, is going to... Oh, man. Uh... I am going to uh, move to attack Spracket. So. Oh, I might die, y'all. For real. Yeah, this is going to be pretty bad. I'm going to move. We were doing so well. With disadvantage, right? Yeah, with disadvantage. With, with disadvantage. It wasn't enough. I did, I did pull a minus one, but uh, that is still going to be a total of three damage. <laughs> You right. still up? One hit point. <gasps> oh, man. Oh, my oh, God. <laughs> and starts to cough up so a little So it smashes blood, you, but it had but to move. But it's not dead. So it moved across over the altar. It just sort of steps over the altar to get to you. Yeah. That leaves it. but it, So it's only able to attack you in that round. Uh, and that is the end of the round. Okay, I think this will be probably our last one. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. We'll oh see. Gosh. Let's go. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a breath just so I can get some cards back. Okay, great. Smart. And <sighs> choose. Well, Should one, I? <laughs> mm. All right, I got it. I'm at 27. Uh, okay. Sorry, I probably should have waited till you had chosen GM. Yep. <laughs> 
Pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I scored much higher. All right, what did you get, Josephine? 27. 27, okay, next. I'm at 20 again. 20 again? Yeah, How do you have a never-ending pile of 20s? Uh, and I'm what about- fast. What about arpeggio? I'm stunned, so I don't think it matters, right? It does, you have to choose cards, right? Oh, I don't know. Do I just like get rid of them then? I think that's stun, right? You can stun. Stun cannot perform abilities or use trigger items. Or trigger items, yeah. Shit, actually, that's a good question. I don't know. Do you lose those cards? I Typically, in a game of Gloomhaven, you spend two cards every round, no matter what. Even if you're just waiting or moving or, you know. So it's it's symbolizing the running yeah, out of stamina. Yeah, a character must still select two ability cards to play, but the cards will be discarded with no effect. Yep. Yeah, so you have to choose two mm, cards to discard. That that's sucks. huge. That's tough. All right, well, then here's my other question, though. So I have two cards out right now that I have trackers on. Those, do, I still- They are spent cards. They are not part of your hand or discard pile. They don't exist. Yeah. Uh, they're they're kind of out there in the ether. You can't choose to discard them. No, no, no. I was asking, do those actions still happen even though I'm stunned? Because one of you them is the like- automatic ones? Yeah. Yeah, as long as they're automatic, yeah. Yeah, because nothing, I don't do anything. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I picked my cards. Mine is a 10. Uh, Whoa. Wow. Well, you're not. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Uh, but I just ten, wanted and it then to happen. That leaves what? Inox? Is, uh, what do you got, Inox? I got 13. 13! Wow. 13. Get him, Inox. Freaking amazing. Uh, but this time. Damn. They keep beating me. Yeah. And this time, I went fast. Uh, no. All right. So here we go. Oh, no. Am I too late? Here we go around the horn. Um, it. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with. Uh, these are uh, these are basic ranged attacks, so they're basically just like taking like bones from the floor and throwing them better at you, than like a, better than a magically. 10? Yep, and they whoa, the first one is going to go at. I'm going to try to take out Spracket so Spracket doesn't get a turn. <gasps> so here we go, and there <laughs> is disadvantage. Oh wait, I'm not I'm not disadvantaged anymore. Yeah, metal is just a. I'm not uh, disadvantaged anymore. Please don't kill me. But oh, I still no. hold uh, a fumble. It was the first of the oh. two. That I oh. So I fumble yes. on the shot yes. at Spracket, and I'm awesome. reshuffling now. And don't you have a curse in there, too? I, I do. Uh, okay. Is it in all of them? I, th I know it's in the bone mech. Is it in all of them? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I think it's just in the bone mech. I think it's just in the bone mech. I could be wrong, but I think oh, it's just the bone Muddle mech. says remove at the end of next turn, by the way. Uh, yeah, but I I, the, I had my. Oh, you turn. already had it. Yeah, oh, okay. it, it, all right. It I'll usually, write it yeah, usually <laughs> it goes through one of your turns. So, uh, okay. okay. So I miss, and then the next one is going to do it uh, also at Spracket. I'm going to keep pushing, and I do two oh points of damage to Spracket. They aren't, no. they aren't. They aren't targeting my my distraction. No, these are the ones that are back by the altar, back by you. So uh, you can you can lose an ability card to negate one HP loss. That's true. Oh, but then she would still be down. She would still go down, though. No, no, no. To it, it, you ignore the whole one instance of HP loss. Oh. Yep. So are you gonna discard bye. a card that's currently? <laughs> bye. All right. So you you yep. discard that I will and stay up. Discard this card and not take the damage. Thank you. And then the Wait. last one does yeah. actually attack your guy and gets two two damage. All right, he's half, your... he's half broken. It has 12 hit points? <laughs> it has, you've only done, you've done six and it, sorry, my math is weird. It started with 10 and it's down to four now. Wow, 10 so... hit points is freaking amazing. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah. Thing. Uh, yeah, okay. It's, like I said, more than I started with. All right, yeah. then it's Sydney's turn, then it's Arpeggio's turn, stunned, then it's Inox's okay, turn. Okay, but at the end of my turn, the uh, enemy with the highest hit points takes one damage and gains <gasps> yes. muddle again. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Second round, well, baby. Well, that's huge. Got it. Okay. And yes. that is good. everybody now gains an additional plus one damage to your attack. That's not true. That can't be right. I believe it's every attack they do, it moves one. So like each ally's attack. On right? your ally's next five attacks. So yeah, so I'm saying the next attack yeah that each of you do gains one now. No, the next attack that the next one does gains one. On all, 
on your allies' next five attacks. Oh. So the allies oh. combined their each individual yeah. attack, it moves one. I've been doing oh. that wrong. Oh, so but we should nobody, have been getting nobody that bonus really faster. attacked besides uh, besides Skid. Everybody, nobody yeah. really pulled modifiers. Okay, so it'll be at one. It's still it's still up one. Yeah. Okay. So it's correct right now, I believe. Okay. Okay, Inox. All right. Uh, I he's going to do a leaping cleave against the skull mech. Is there another enemy adjacent? To yes, the, one of the, the poisoned priest yes. is. If you want to try to take out the Come poison, on, I'm gonna try both. to go against both That'll of them. That'll give you a plus one damage on the poisoned. Uh, three damage against the bone mech, and two against the other one. Uh, that adds up to three, which is enough to take it out. Awesome. Nice. So the bone mech okay. is still priest? up, but one of the priests is down. Okay. The poisoned priest is down. That leaves one other priest, uh, the normal one that's attacking the dummy, and the bone mech, which is looking in rough shape. Uh, okay. Inox, what, okay. you have a bottom half. Bottom half, I'm going to do eye for an eye, uh, three healing on myself. Oh, oh. amazing. Uh, all right, recharging, and now it is Spracket's turn. Spracket, you are okay. up. I tried to put you down. I'm up. You can't take me out. I will dart through, running forward toward the mech, and doing an attack, a melee attack. You get a plus two to your attack. Good, because that was me. a minus one, so that's uh, so. So that'd be three minus one. So that's two damage. Two damage, <laughs> okay. And then for the bottom of my card, I do another melee attack. Okay, now you get a nice. plus three to this oh, attack. Oh, wow. Wow. <gasps> that would be six damage. I go, what? you can't Whoa. kill me! <laughs> 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 Okay, it is in our parlance. It is on, near death. Be dead. Oh my gosh, be oh. dead already. Uh, which basically means <sighs> that one, one good hit so away. Awesome, Sydney. You see that? Oh, Sydney, that thing is Fun. ridiculous. Yeah. This is a good card. But it's I gotta also burn it. it's a lost card, so that yeah. you know it's powerful. It's gonna be um, gone. Okay, good turn, Spracket, and it is. <gasps> Man, you, I, I, I picked a forty-five for the bone mech, and all of you went before that, which is just crazy to me. Uh, <laughs> all right, dazzle, yeah. you're up. I wish I was gonna attack, but it's not really my thing. It's okay. You could do a bait move and a basic attack. You a could. basic attack. I think you, we've established the mech has some shield, death. right? You would get a plus um, four. Yeah, but you get a plus four to the attack. Oh. I don't know. It's up to you. It's up. It's up to you. But you do get a plus four. Maybe you'll crit. And the bone mech should have minus three to its uh, armor because of my two. Uh, there's still attacks. a priest though, too, right? There's one priest left on yeah. at my decoy. I think I think either way, there's still more. I really apologize for like the weirdness of this ability that's about to pop off, but I have faith that you guys are gonna take them out. Okay. I have. Okay. I. I have faith in this crew <laughs> because um, I have some regrets of the past, which is oh, the name no. of this. And I'm going to um, actually first I'll do my bottom action. I'll move to be uh, in the middle of my allies, and I'll bless. Uh, I'll bless Inox. Oh, my thank buddy, you. Nice. Bronson. Um, and then I'm going to heal the priest. Three. Wait, the priest? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Stick with me. Okay. But okay, then I get uh -huh. to heal every single one of my allies three. <gasps> oh, okay. Heck yeah. Wow. Okay. okay. The priest is back up to full. Heal a rejuvenation what? of oh, well, health. You know, I, I have faith, though, that you guys will take them down. <laughs> it's only okay. three. <laughs> okay. And that's, that's a me. Well, hell of a turn, and uh, okay, so it is Bone Mech's turn. Last gasp of the Bone Mech. Um, hmm. All right, I'm gonna I'll roll a die here. It's either gonna attempt to destroy Spracket, right, or Inox. Makes sense. Here we go. I know. Got a I am beating on right? it. Got a D twenty here. Eleven to twenty will be Spracket. Natural twenty. <gasps> Oh, it's meant to be. It's going as as after. Can't take me down. 
Uh, Spracket was very bold, moved right up to it to attack it, and this Wait, who, cre- who has the muddle? Uh, it has, it's muddled. It's muddled, okay, so yeah. it has disadvantage. It has disadvantage, but I've chosen focused strikes. All attacks Why against the same enemy. And I get three attacks. So first attack. Why would you do is that? Is a plus two and a fumble. <gasps> oh. So fumble. fumble on the first attack. Yes. The second attack. Uh-oh. God damn it. Uh, that's a zero damage. Oh what? my gosh. <laughs> and third attack is two damage. Two? Wait, you're you're good. I'm right? still up, bitch. Yes. Oh, Son wow. of a bitch. That's bitch. crazy. Yes. That is insane. I, I thought I had you. I thought blessed, I had you. Ble- blessed be upon ye. <laughs> Thank you for the muddle. Oh. Uh, okay, and that that is the end of the round. All right, let's go. I'm gonna catch my breath to get my cards back because I had two stamina left. Oh yeah, I need to also do that. Okay, that catching rough. breath, pulling cards back. Understood. Yeah, I think you have to do that at two stamina, right? Yeah. <laughs> In combat, you do. Um, and now we randomly will discard one, right? I'll discard this one that just fell on the floor. Oh, right, you have to discard <sighs> when you catch breath. I forgot. Oh, man. These All right, numbers, uh, they're all Paula, so high. Have you chosen? No. Inox? Yes. What do you got? 20. 20? Okay. Arpeggio? Okay, I got 12. 12? Spracket? I have, uh, it's gonna be 16. That's gonna be my lower one. Uh, Okay, 16 and and Josephine. There we go. I think mine's gonna be 32, yeah. 32. Okay, here we go. Uh, Here we go. Actually, okay, here we go. No longer muddled. Priest is going to. Well, the first one will attack the dummy. That's one point of damage to the dummy. That dummy is All so right. annoying. It's almost yeah, I'm dead. sorry, that's not the priest. A- that's the other one. Then, then the priest uh, will go after Inox, and that's uh, three points of damage. Okay, to Inox. one point. Is the next uh, attack on me uh, did half damage rounded down. Okay. Yeah. So one point, um, and then, and that's that. Now it's Arpeggio's turn. Okay. Uh, first I'm doing my power ballad. And me and each ally add plus one attack to your first attack each turn. So you'll all get a plus one. Oh, great. Um, yeah. Then I am going to again do uh, my dissonant rhythm. Beep, boop, boop, beep, boop. And you get muddle. The priest and the other uh, one left gets muddle. Damn it. Joe is so mad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It basically means you can never crit. Like, that's and what a muddle is. It's an I effective my, nullifies crits. I move my little tracker up. It's the end of my turn. And that means the enemy with the highest current hit point suffers uh, minus one damage and muddle. Yes. Nice. So everybody's got muddle. It was still... The uh, the bone mech, okay. Even though it's right at the end of its life, Spracket. All right. Bone mech um, is falling to pieces in front of you. Maybe one of its hands, just bones, have already fallen off. But this yeah, like this armor is still chugging. There's steam pouring out the back of it. It's so, some sort of weird powered armor. You get a plus four if you attack. Spracket says, you thought I was out of charges. Turns out I have one left. Shoves some more liquid into their melty thing. Takes the cap off of it. Flamethrower time, baby. (laughs) And and now, instead of just heating up something to melt, a flame comes out in kind of like a little, like, shape. Um, So if the priest is adjacent to the bone mech, it will get the priest too, but I'm not Uh, sure if they are. Yeah, I think you could get both of them, yeah. Yes, because I can do one, two, and then one away. So, okay. So at both of them, this is piercing two. They oh, will take shit. a wound. And, and wounded. Take, yeah, and. Wounded means you automatically take a point of damage every that's, turn, like bleed. Oh, damage. Yeah, that's like bleed. Is that, oh, is that wow. with the plus four, too? 
With the plus four, we're doing eight damage, piercing oh two, my. wounded. Oh my Anna god. Anna creates flame yes. elements. Piercing two, <laughs> wounded. <laughs> <laughs> this fire burns out through both of them and That's it seems to card. it's so hot it seems to melt the very bones of the skeleton and the armor falls yes. to the ground yes. oh, the, the uh, miserable tortured priest just screams in agony ah! and fades into nothing leaving one measly priest left. But yeah, you just dominated that shit. Do you have a bottom half uh, of your card that you want to do? Or do that we leave it That was just the top half. That's crazy. Oh, that is crazy. Oh, yeah. It's burned, so it's gone forever. Uh, my other one is a jump, so I'm just going to jump. Jump. Back. Jump back. <laughs> jump around. All right, jump, jump, around. jump, and jump around. And it is Inox's turn. Inox, a, a, a scant few feet away from you, is this priest that's still focused on the decoy. Okay, I'm gonna take the yeah. long way around. I'm gonna move four. I'm gonna take the long way around so I move as many spaces as possible. Okay. <laughs> and then when I get to them, I'm going to use balanced measure. I'm gonna do X damage where X is the number of spaces I've moved this turn. Oh, yes. Nice. Uh, okay. Cool. So that's four plus one. Um, plus. plus another one, uh, six, six damage. Yes, Six damage is enough to destroy the yes. final yes. spirit. Holy oh, shit, no, you guys. guys. Oh, what a and comeback. Turn what a awesome. combat. You did it. Awesome. Wow. Spracket says, hey, Hector. Very good looking out for yourself and hiding in the <laughs> corner that whole time. He's just like shivering in the back. <laughs> it's good to have self-preservation in mind. Good work. <laughs> and the same <laughs> very genuinely, this is a compliment. Arpeggio has str tears streaming down her face from this yeah. misery, the misery she yeah. felt. And she goes, we're just so lucky to have one another. You were all incredible out there, except for Hector, who <laughs> could have helped a little bit, just a little well, bit. You know, H Hector's still new. Hector's still new. And he doesn't I've, know. He doesn't the, get it. The uh, action I had queued up was a little lay on hands, which I feel like just happens to Arpeggio right now and heals oh. them for their maximum oh. hit point value. Oh. That's wow. okay. I'm just at two <laughs> hit points and you haven't really healed me much at all here this whole, but <laughs> it's fine. I'll only. heal myself. I'll bandage myself. You, you did heal me. <laughs> you did heal me. Compliments and it was very You're awesome. really good at hurting your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Ha ha ha. Thanks for healing me, beautiful. Uh, I guess all we have to do is just keep walking and we'll get out of here. Let's go. Uh, let's let's Wait, go. Was there a uh, thing that on this? Yeah. The, uh, oh. Was there a thing on this bone mech that we yeah, needed to get? Yeah, so the Did first thing the first thing that you'll notice is the the bone mech, the armor is uh, an actual like retrievable set of armor that is incredibly Ooh. valuable. Okay. Uh, some may call it a legendary item. Oh. Uh, it's an incredible item called steam armor, and it was oh. one of the reasons it was really tough to to beat this uh, beat this guy. Uh, already had innate shield as an elite living bones is really what he was, uh, but he was boss level. So I made him boss level, so he had a bunch of hit points. Whoa. Um, he actually had 28 hit points. Oh, wow, and yeah. And okay. he already came with shield one. The steam oh armor gives you shield one against the next five attacks against you. So Holy it, he moly. had shield two wow. for a while, and it just, it took a while to really ch chip him yeah. down. But that's an incredible piece uh, of armor. I believe it's worth a hundred gold pieces, oh, which uh, wow. is, is, is as expensive Whoa. as it gets, really, in purchasable items in the game. Oh, I wish we were playing longer than just one exactly. shot. Yeah. That's I why really I didn't like mind giving you amazing items. Uh, yeah. I really love this combat. Like, how, yeah. how are you gonna? Yeah. You believe uh, from Vermling lore that within this altar could potentially be contained the the Ring of Elements or whatever the elements. hell it's called. I, I would I say uh, sing to it. Oh, okay. I sing to the altar to to make it open. <laughs> I was gonna ask Bronson to smash it, but singing could work. Yeah, singing no, doesn't work. Oh, okay. Oh. Your turn. It was a great Bronson? song, but let's try a bit of muscle. And I show off my muscles, and bam, bam. 
smashing uh, open the altar, you will indeed find a very special item. Huzzah! Uh, now we take it back. Is circle it circle of elements. It's called the circle, circle of, elements. of elements. During your turn, use any element to create any other element. Oh, this would have uh, been cool to have five minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Why been. didn't we think of that? That's so been. funny. But uh, <laughs> an, an ancient artifact of the Vermlings of this area and something which you guys are going to be able to abscond with as you eventually find your way through the tunnels and out to the yeah. Vermling encamp encampment Woo! saved by the finders uh, to, to live another day and you can go That's on right. to survive. And at the mere uh, cost of 17 years of our lives. At the yeah. mere, uh, <laughs> uh, and it was a real long con. It was worth uh, it. <laughs> worth, worth the long con. Uh, so yeah, at this point, what you do is is kind of up to you. Um, I don't want to say too much, just in case we ever get a chance to play these characters again. So I don't want to go t too epilogue, but I okay. believe in a certain sense, uh, folks uh, in the world of Gloomhaven that are uh, that are built like you guys with your mentality, with your abilities, they rarely stay quiet for long. Uh, pretty much, they'll get wrapped up in something soon, and uh, somebody's going to hire them to do something nasty. We'll be uh, back in point. prison again. You'll be back in prison <laughs> yeah. again so in no same. time. Years. Uh, so Always so the same con. <laughs> yeah, it's the same con. <laughs> uh, a huge thank you to Cephalo Fair for supporting uh, the Glass Cannon Network. That they are friends of the pod, and we're so excited to try out their new game that they are working on. Should be out next year. There are constant backer kit updates. Uh, uh, as the game is being built and progressing along and it's looking really, really exciting. Even the months since Gen Con, they have added so much detail to the game and I'm looking forward to uh, more and more of it. Uh, a couple even occur to me now that I meant to mention during the show and didn't because I can't keep it all in my head at once. There's a, lot, a lot to, to this do. game. Yeah, there's a lot to this game and there's going to be a lot to explore and uncover as you continue playing it. So thank you again to Cephal Affair. Thank you again to these amazing players. Sydney Emanuel, Paula Deming, Skidmar and Josephine McAdam. Appreciate you guys so much. And until the next Friends of the Pod, uh, have a good time, everybody. Try new games <laughs> and uh, and role play yourselves uh, to death. All right. Later. Bye, everybody. <laughs> I, lo I love you, my family. My loving family. <laughs> love you very, guys. Very good GMing, Joe. Very good GMing, Joe. Good job, Joe. Good job, Joe. Good job. 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 Good job